Oh, oh, sure, yes. Uh, off my Twitter, actually. I can't even give out your fucking Twitter name because it's too weird and long <laughs> and shit. But he writes, uh, when the hell is Jesse Ventura going to be down to Haiti talking about the metal thermite that caused the earthquake? Yeah. And, of course, he'll yeah. do it nine years later. No, it's not the yeah. thermite. It's that fucking project. A harp. Harp. Harp the caused harp the project. earthquake. See, they wanted to bring down Haiti. So they took the harp waves and made an earthquake. Shut up! They were testing it on Haiti. On Haiti. What's next? Well, I'm just asking the question. Well, it makes sense. Oh, oh, oh. It makes sense question. if you think about it. I'm with Jesse Ventura on this. Well, thank you for your service to the country. Not much. Uh, we're, we're not losing much in as far as uh, the, the entire world goes if we test the harp on a country that's uh, in rough shape to begin with. <laughs> yeah. So I think Jesse might be correct on that. What do you thank me for my service? I wish I would have said thank you for noticing nothing when you were at Ground Zero until you saw some college kids video. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks for noticing nothing <laughs> awry while you were there. Yeah, we're, we're not making a statement until fucking the yeah. building rubble had already been cleared. <laughs> Good job. How about some original thoughts back in, I don't know, October of, uh, two, uh, when, when was 9 11? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, September. How about 10 11? 2001. <laughs> right. I was just going a little, a little further in a couple weeks later. How about some original fucking thoughts on the whole thing? Dana White, how are you, sir? Good. Bob Levy's like, speaking of, uh, Throwing shit down people's throat. Dana White to the. <laughs> oh, I know. Hey, well, why don't you come in and see us anymore? Dude, I've been in New York for the last, I don't know how many months. You know what I want to talk about? What? Jesse the Body Fit. <laughs> oh, Jesse? <laughs> On yeah. Anthony, man. That's what I want to talk about. Yes, with thermite paint. Jimmy was I impressive saw, that I day, huh? The video. Yeah. The video is awesome. And he hasn't seen this yet. Go to go to YouTube and check out uh, Jesse the Body Ventura on Oak Anthony. I think you are a bad little motherfucker. I love that. I it know he so he did not back down to that fucking guy. He did not back down. He, 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 he's walking out the door looking like he's going to kill him. He says, "Fuck you and you're up." <laughs> oh, the riff rap riff from riff rap. Rocky Horror hairdo. <laughs> that was great. Wow, that was awesome, Dad. I'm Thank you. What, <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I went and saw. I went and saw him stand up and out. Me and Chuck Liddell. Yep, he was incredible. He's unbelievable. <laughs> He's a bad, the baddest little dude you'll ever meet. Oh, thanks, Dan. Yeah, it. yeah, it was cool. Dane and Chuck and a few people came to the improv one night. Wow, and cool. And Chuck was almost heckling, and I'm like, "What am I going to do if Liddell gets out of control?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Liddell was out of control that night, actually, and uh, we dealt with it. Oh, you did deal with it? I did. Yeah, I had to deal with it. Unfortunately, like everything else in the UFC, I have to deal with it. You have to be like fucking... Unfortunately, though, you got to be like uh, Siegfried and Roy, where one day you're just going to get your head bitten, exactly. <laughs> thinking you have them all exactly. tame. Everybody, everybody talks about it. come up to me and say, you're a genius. It's unbelievable what you do. I'm a glorified fucking babysitter. That's what I am. <laughs> As you're talking, I'm thinking of uh, Coleman. I think he fought Fedor. Did he fight Fedor? Do you, do you want me to start saying, uh, let me tell you the reasons I don't believe in my country. My country has lied to me more times. Uh, <laughs> that help? You love that Jesse Ventura thing. No, but isn't there a... a I've watched I, it seven times. Nice. <laughs> didn't, didn't, I, dude, I got a lot of hate mail over that. I, people, it was amazing how they're like, how could you disrespect... It's like they didn't watch the whole clip. They just thought I was just being a wise-ass to a guy who was fair to this country. It was really... Well, we threw up more clips, finally, yeah. because because we turned on the camera just uh, <laughs> seconds before the whole thing went down, so people thought that Jimmy uh, attacked him out of nowhere, but it was... Uh, it was about 45 minutes yeah. of, like, enough of this crap. I, I don't know how you can that and, and think that. Listen, I, I met Jesse in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, when we went and did the fight there. He came to the fight. He sat in the front row. Couldn't have been a nicer guy. It was a very nice guy. I have nothing bad to say about him at all. Right. But that day, listen, if you're going to debate with somebody, you, you need to have some facts. And uh, you beat the shit out of him. I mean, you, you literally <laughs> uh, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. And he didn't win. And he got up and basically walked out. And, and I, I couldn't agree with you more with, with yeah. the I think way it went down. Yeah. Thank he, you, man. He walked out Thank because you. he was losing the argument. Yeah, it was he just, just didn't have his uh, his facts together. Whenever two guys are arguing, I always feel it's like you know you're just two guys arguing. I'm not trying to tough guy against a guy. He could throw me through a fucking brick wall. It's <laughs> it's just two guys debating. 
I'm not testing his manhood or questioning his service to his country or any of that shit. Yes, you were. I well, saw. I was here. No, I wasn't. Actually, I was just... it, was, it was quite the opposite. Uh, Jesse was questioning his. You've never, you've never been in the service, so uh, you have no right to talk about it. Yeah, apparently that's and his you logic. Saying, really? So because I've never been in the service, I have no right to talk about how I feel about the troops or how I feel about, you know, uh, all these issues, that's bullshit. And, and you were right and he was wrong. That's why he got up and walked out. Yeah, it was very, it was a very, uh, it was an uncomfortable moment. And uh, well, I, I haven't seen him nothing, since. I got nothing personal against the guy. No. He, he, he's never been anything but nice to me. But that day he lost. <laughs> yeah, we love him on the show. And he's going to have a book uh, coming out soon. I think he comes back. Well, I hope so. I, I really believe he, he comes back down. on the show. Didn't he turn us down already? Oh, it, oh, it's time for the book already? Oh, did he say no? No, come on. Ventura passed on the show for it's his April press. Oh, for his yeah. April press? I, well, yeah, I'll believe it when back. I see it when, he, when we get close to it. Do your April. homework and, and, and go toe to toe. Yeah, come on back and we'll yep. do a, a, another fight. You know, you're, you love the rematch, right, Dan, uh, Dana? <laughs> I'm all about the rematch. You're all Dana. about the rematch. Jesse Ventura will be on our show today. Oh, that's right. No, he won't. Of course he won't. I'm, he doesn't like, um, you know, uh, interesting. A conversation, a little confrontation, uh, Jimmy Norton. I can shit. Uh, Norton. Steve, Norton. Steve's like, we asked him a few times. I'm like, man, ask once. 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 We'll invite him Bang once. Him. He wants to come, he comes. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Yeah. Who cares? I think it'd be great to have him in. You don't want to come in? <laughs> don't. And, but he doesn't yeah. want to come in because he doesn't want to look stupid. Well, that's... I think if he felt like he could hold his own on this show, he would come back. Because that's what happened uh, the last few times. He was on Larry King last night. Eh, you know. I'm sure it was a riveting, challenging interview. Well, he's got a big book on conspiracies. Yeah. All a book now on conspiracies. What the government conspiracy? The lame show wasn't enough. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Ah, you think uh, he did that too? Yeah. Look at you, stupid. Your goddamn stupid riffraff hair. <laughs> Larry King. Well, that's. I guess, ah. I guess that's our problem. Yeah. At the time, it makes sense. And actually, Jimmy did a great job. So of course he I'm did. just using this as an example. Uh, it seems like a good idea. And then we never get the person again. <laughs> yeah, maybe he'll learn a lesson. Don't that's touch right. people when you're arguing. I'm sure Larry King has wanted to say some stupid, crazy, get the fuck out of my studio type stuff. Thanks for your service. <laughs> To your country. Right. Shut up. Exactly. Beat it. Do you think one time Larry King wanted to yell and scream at somebody? But he just holds back. Yeah, probably. And he makes millions of dollars and everyone comes on his show. The garlic people. Yeah. They stiffed me. Uh, Ventura's going to be in, in the building, though, today. Yeah, but like long after we're off the air. Unless he's Not doing... even long after. Conveniently, pretty much as we're getting in our cars, like slightly after that. Maybe we'll see him in the elevator. Uh oh, that would be scary. What would we hey. do? Hey, what would we do? Please. All right, so uh, maybe they could pull some audio from Larry King's interview with uh, Jesse Ventura. I watched like uh, the first 10 minutes. I was bored. Yeah. So I decided to turn that damn TV off and get some sleep. All right, it's choice time. Aunt. A choice. Jesse Ventura and Larry King explaining all his fucking conspiracies. I, I like the sound of that. Right, right away, right? Yeah. Or we got the women in New Jersey getting botched butt implants. That's This story's making a lot of sense. I've, I've heard that story. Okay. So I'm going to be a little biased because I've heard or, that. Or it's, a qu or it's a quickie, and we'll get to most of the stuff today. Uh, the long list of side effects for a uh, fine drug. Oh, what drug? Um, Something fun? Danny, what drug was this? Something again? exciting? Well, this is one of uh, one of the drugs that where they kind of have to put like what it does in the name of the drug uh, and then add some kind of some kind of suffix to it to, okay. you know, to make it sound like it's you know like it's really good uh, so this one's called abilify <laughs> oh, oh, oh okay I've heard, I've heard of, of abilify I like ass oh. effects <laughs> yeah that's one of you my favorite one? Ass of and it's yeah. not spelled anything like <laughs> ass effects like you would think it's ACI. I have to yeah, take yeah. that crap you take ass effects uh -huh. acid reflux oh I'm, I'm with you Oh, I would bet most of our listeners are on the damn ass, ass effects. effects. I take Nexium. There you go, Nexium, same shit. Nexium, <clears throat> yeah, for your um uh, acid reflux. reflux. It works too. Yeah, the ass effects works. Although I'm, I haven't really had to take it in the last month. Or Changes so. your life. Um, really? Yeah, it's great. Ooh. 
You haven't suffered from acid reflux yet? No, every so oh, often uh, if I eat something spicy God, or maybe lucky. I have like a little too much vino, mm-hmm. I'll get a little heartburn. Yeah, that's like it. Like that, but that's um, it. you know, I take a Tums and it's gone. Oh, you're lucky. It's like Kids in the Hall Brain Candy. Have you guys ever seen that movie? It wasn't actually that bad, but no. it's about like this fake. It's like it's kind of like like a Zoloft kind of drug, but they call it in the movies called Gleemanex. <laughs> Gleemanex, <laughs> absolutely perfect. Name. That yeah, sounds that. like well, a name. It could be a, dr- a drug name, of course. Well, this well, is a quickie. We we started this a couple of weeks ago, where these drugs that they advertise on TV they don't sound that great because they talk about how great the drug is for maybe five or ten seconds, and the la- the last uh, twenty five seconds of the commercial twenty five. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's even longer? L- 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 wow. Uh, this one's longer? See how long All they the- actually talk about what the drug does? Okay. And then how long they actually talk about like the side effects the of side what The side effects are horrific, but I guess the FDA forces them to make sure they they have the side effects in, in oh, these drug commercials. To. Yeah, they have to now. So here you go. I'm taking an antidepressant, but it feels like I need some more help. Approximately two out of three Fuck people off. being treated for depression still have unresolved symptoms. If your antidepressant Drink. alone isn't enough... Talk to your doctor. One option he may consider is adding Abilify. Abilify is approved to treat depression in adults when added to an antidepressant. Learn more about Abilify. Call your doctor if your depression worsens or you have unusual changes in mood. Oh, okay. Here it is. Yeah, yeah. Now it's All just... Right, listen. There's 45. Here it goes. There's 45 seconds left. 45 in the seconds left, and they're already <laughs> starting on the. Uh oh, here's what might happen. So it's supposed to help your depression, but he says call the doctor if this does the exact opposite. <laughs> yes, the exact. Opposite. That's like selling Viagra and saying call your doctor if you have an erection that lasts more than four hours, or if it makes you totally impotent. <laughs> Gives you bobo dick. Yeah. <laughs> well, here we go with the side effects. You want to try to count real fast? You got a bell in. Yeah, or at least ring the bell. Yeah, I actually want to hear him, though. Okay. I don't want the More bell to distract. Abilify. Call your doctor if your depression worsens or you have unusual changes in mood, behavior, or thoughts of suicide. Antidepressants can increase these in children, teens, and young adults. Elderly dementia patients taking Abilify have an increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor if you have high fever, stiff muscles, and confusion on Abilify as these may be signs of a life-threatening reaction. Poor uncontrollable muscle movements, as these could become permanent. High blood sugar has been reported with Abilify like and medicines like it. In some cases, extreme high blood sugar can lead to coma or death. Other risks include dizziness upon standing, decreases in white blood cells, which can be serious, seizures, impaired judgment or motor skills, or trouble swallowing. Adding Abilify has made a difference for me. I bet. Talk to your doctor about the risks and benefits of adding Abilify. <laughs> That's, oh, that's gonna suck for the drug company. Why would you bother advertising? And they say that about the risks horrific. and benefits, like yeah. risks are first. Risks are first. Yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. yeah, there's risks. That sounds horrific. That's Call a- your doctor if you take a billify and your head explodes like scanners. <laughs> 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 that is fucking a coin toss. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's pretty much flip a coin, man. It's You're- either gonna make you feel good. Well, you're going to commit suicide after murdering your children with a hammer. <laughs> I like how they, they tested this drug on elderly dementia patients. <laughs> and they died. Yes. A few of them had to die. Yes. Call, call, a bill of, call your doctor if taking a Bilify causes you to wander in front of a train because you think it's a relative. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, shit. I was just watching TV the other day, and like I was half paying attention, and I heard the commercial come on, and like the, the side effects started. And then it just kept going and going, and like it got to a point where I was just like, "Are they still talking about this?" <laughs> Is this the same drug? <laughs> I had to make sure that it was the same commercial. Yeah, some of them just go on and on. Like Yaz was my favorite before this one. Yaz is like a birth control pill that you either won't have a baby or you will just hemorrhage uh, and, and just drain of all your blood like a a shot deer. <laughs> Just awful side effects from Yaz. It's a pill that turns into a hand in your womb and it just squeezes whatever's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Women who are on Yaz shouldn't smoke, as this may cause spontaneous human combustion. Yeah. What? Combust into flames? You want to do Jesse Ventura now or you want to take a break? Where, where, are, we huh? at? where are we at? What? Well, uh, yeah, let's try to get into it a little bit. Jesse Ventura was on Larry King. He's not going to do our show this time around. Because uh, Jimmy really <laughs> put him in his place. And I think that's the real reason. Of course it is. It's like the argument we had. Well, because he, he, uh, he, can't, he can't hang on that level. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, we had an argument. Yeah. He's a guy who's like an ex-wrestler. He had nothing to say. 
who to- says confrontational things and inflammatory things, and he probably thinks that he didn't like that I got nasty and personal, but so did he. Yeah. Come on, man. Stop. Mm-hmm. I think it's. I think he can't defend himself is what it really comes down to in the end. But uh, he was on Larry King, and I'm sure. Sh- uh, I'm sure Larry wasn't really gonna confront him. So you got uh, Jesse uh, having a, uh, a run of the place talking about his conspiracies, his conspiracy theories. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. You assert in the book that the 2000 and 2004 national elections were stolen. You say the 2008 election came close to being stolen, too. Should people keep voting if that's true? And how do you know it's true? Well, because of that's where it's bullshit. But, yeah. but 2008 almost was stolen? Almost. From Obama, he's probably saying. Yeah, but how, almost. Uh, how if, if you have, almost if you have the ability to steal elections, why would you Why would you have one that was almost stolen? Wait, how was it almost stolen? He well, fucking sure, ran away with it. I'm sure uh, Jesse's going to explain here. <sighs> Should people keep voting if that's true? And how do you know it's true? Well, because of these voting machines. What do you machines, think it's true? Well, in the research we did, we found out about certain things. And these these computerized electronic voting machines, we got to get rid of them. Because they can be tapped into. They can be... Uh, put it to you this way, Larry. Would you go to an ATM machine that didn't offer you a receipt? Yes. No, they, you say they can be, but What's you don't know ATM? if they are tapped Wait, wait, wait. Into, do you? Ask oh, yeah, the book... <laughs> an ass to mouth machine. I go to the teller and I give her my passbook and she stamps it when I deposit money. <laughs> he knows nothing of anything modern. Can I debunk that? So that's all you need, Jesse, is a receipt? Can, can, a receipt. If, if they're fucking with the voting machines, can't they spit out a fake receipt? A phony receipt? Like, no, because you'd know. Because you'd know. But again, what, what, how, how do you know? Would you? Why sure. would you know? They what? hand you a receipt and it says you voted for someone you didn't? No, no, I mean, like, uh, he said you go to an ATM. Would you go in a- to an ATM that didn't give you a receipt? If you go to an ATM and you take money out and the machine has been rigged to get your bank account information, it could still spit a receipt out and right. fuck you over. Yeah. So what is that? What is what is he even talking about a receipt? Yeah. Receipt. Burr. He's an asshole. <laughs> No, that you say they can be, but you don't know if they are tapped. Wait, wait, into, wait. Do you? Oh yeah, the book. Oh, read the book. Oh, they they were tapped into. They were tapped into. Why were all the votes suddenly channeled to Chattanooga, Tennessee, to this <laughs> operative place? Chattanooga. You'll see that they were tapped into. <laughs> Pause that riff for a second. Up, something it's, he does. It's done. It's done. It's Here's done. what Jesse Ventura does sometimes. He's going to be on the Today Show, by the way, for the people down the hall. Maybe we'll get more oh, audio. we got to get more audio. Yeah, Which please. is, this is what's difficult. He asks you questions. That you don't have an answer which to. Which no one does. Yeah. So it kind of puts you in position where you have to answer. And if you can't answer, it looks like he has made a, 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 a statement of fact to which you have no answer. Yeah. But he's really doing is asking you a question. Well, explain to me exactly how many people voted that were wearing blue hats. I can't. Exactly. Exactly. Then you look silly. You darn rabbit. All the votes went to Chattanooga. <laughs> <laughs> Chattanooga. <laughs> What's he talking about? Chattanooga. What kind of question is that? Why did all the votes go to Chattanooga? I don't know. Can you say Chattanooga? Chattanooga. <laughs> really? Chattanooga. Now I gotta go back to the ship and get another match. <laughs> the ship was made out of thermite paint, rabbit. <laughs> oh, God. I'll steal the election and make it look like an accident. <laughs> Did you ever see when Bugs Bunny's playing the piano and Daffy put an explosive charge and he kept playing the wrong song? He knew. What did he? Thermite minor key. Fucking <laughs> dolt. Well, Larry didn't have an answer for that, so. No so, one does. So, Jesse. <laughs> no one does. You're right. Blue hats. I'm keeping track of 54. Though. Jesse. No. Jesse won Larry King zero. And then they moved on to the next conspiracy. Uh, one of the book's chapters is titled, Your Government Dealing Drugs. In a recent blog on the Huffington Post, you accuse the Obama administration of a staggering hypocrisy, your words, in continuing George W. Bush's so-called drug war policies. What do you mean? 
Well, the government the is dealing drugs. What do you mean? <laughs> well, uh, it's it's a well-known fact that I ran well Contra that they were running drugs in which to support the, the 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 Contras down there in Nicaragua and all that stuff. The CIA's been doing it for years, Larry, because see, if they can get their own source of money, then they can do things without telling Congress about it. But well, if how do you a, know they're doing it? How do you know that? Look in my book and you'll see the facts and you'll read about how it led right to Ollie North's desk. <laughs> see, the, look at my book. Right to Ollie North's desk. Jesus you, you Christ. Think I, you think a kilo was put Just on Ollie's... Just a giant pile of coke like Scarface. Ollie. Right. Ollie North is, is spreading them out with his hand. I gotta get organized. <laughs> but do you see that twice, two times Larry asked specific questions? Yes, specific. And his answer was, read my book. Now, I understand Big. he's got to sell his book. That's business. But you know something? How about you give us a little something and say how he knows. Say how he knows that one. And then all the details of, of it are in my book. But I'll tell you, it's this guy or that guy, and I talk to him and... You know, but there's, he, he offers you nothing. The CIA's been doing it for years. Doing I, it for years. I ran Contra. Why? What about it? Yeah, we 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 remember that one. I believe it was weapons more arms for so hostages, than, no? than drugs and arms for hostages. Yeah, there were all kinds of shenanigans going on back then. Yeah, they might with have the thrown, commies and they might have thrown a few drugs in there. Yeah, little, what are you going to do? Maybe pot, a few drugs. A little pot. But just I don't to think it was mellow this, everyone out. I don't think it was a giant drug deal no. going on uh, back by the CIA to finance themselves. You think Obama's dealing drugs uh, in the West Wing? You have to come to the back door of the yeah, West Wing. Yeah. <laughs> Give a little knock. Michelle comes to the door. A little can comes down. You put the money in it. Who are you? <laughs> right. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Let's say hi to uh, Larry King. Larry. Oh. Great interview last night, Larry. Thank you, boys. Jesse, can I get thermite paint in a satin latex? <laughs> <laughs> satin latex. You want something in a low gloss. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next uh, conspiracy here. Mm. My nephew, I saw him, he's 15 years old, and I talked to him about it, and I said, have you learned about the assassination of President Lincoln? And he kind of perked up. He said, yeah, we had that two weeks ago in school. I said, tell me what you know about oh, it. Oh, no. And he related that John Wilkes Booth went to the Ford Theater, shot Lincoln in the back of the head, yelled something, dropped down, ran off. They hurt his leg. They chased him and caught him in the farmhouse and killed him. We're not teaching our kids that there were eight other people involved in this massive conspiracy, that they were also going to attempt to kill Vice yeah. President Johnson, Secretary of State Seward, as well as General Ulysses S. Grant. They failed on those three, but they were successful with That's, Lincoln. But Yet our history books don't tell that to our kids. The only thing they learn about is John Wilkes Booth. And isn't it interesting, Larry, that every assassin, lone nut assassin, you learn all three names, John Wilkes Booth, Lee Harvey Oswald, Mark David Chapman. Yet I'll ask what you, well, what's Charles Manson's middle name? Who cares? Sweetie Pie? Did he who say who cares? Who cares? Yes. Did Larry say who, who cares? cares? You know what? It, I, I, that is the best thing Larry King's ever said, because you know what? Who cares? And why does he throw Mark David Chapman in there? And the reason we look, we, we know the assassin's name is because that's the way the media paints them. Yes. The media, it's a way of giving importance and, and, and a monumental status to a person. By, what's your middle name? Oh, I don't have one. Do you, oh, you don't have one? No. Uh, Anthony? Ah, uh, sorry. Don't have one. You seriously lying? No, no. Don't have one. I have a, I have a, oh, really? I, swear. I have a confirmation uh, middle name. Well, my name is. But it's not on a birth certificate or anything. Jim Norton. Okay, Jim Norton killed the... Pr James Joseph Norton was arrested today. Uh, it yeah. just sounds more official. It's more it's facts out there. Lee Harvey Oswald. He was Lee Oswald his whole life. Why do we learn their whole name? Because when you assassinate uh, a quote-unquote important person, for some reason in people's minds, it makes you important, and it elevates you. We know George Walker Bush. We know William Jefferson Clinton. We know Ronald Wilson Reagan. We know a lot of important people's entire lives. And look names. at who was assassinated, too. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther you know? King, yeah. Uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. <laughs> yeah, JFK, RFK. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you kind of know. You know, it gives, it gives more prestige and power. For some reason, that's just the way that they yeah. are. Yeah. Uh, but Jesse, I, I don't know where Jesse was going with that, by the way. And I've 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 heard about the conspiracy. That isn't a that isn't a um conspiracy like did it happen or did it not happen? There was absolutely a conspiracy. Yeah. People conspire to kill Lincoln. 
and and other people like you said the vice president it was it was supposed to be a whole big thing and a lot of people were were hung for that put to death for uh oh, for that is that yeah, true it wasn't just john Wilkes booth that died there were people a doctor that treated booth and uh other people um uh, that were involved in the conspiracy yeah they were put to death but, but it's not like nobody knows this he's bringing shit up that it's like, yeah, I, let me tell you, I know. That, what, 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 was, what was he getting at with Charles Manson? I don't name? know. I, was Charles Manson, by the way, was Manson really his last name? No. Krautmeyer, right? Charles Krautmeyer, I think, is his real name. Are you kidding? So what's the Manson No, it was about? Maddox. Actually. Maddox? Where, why is Charles Manson Maddox. such a cool name to have, then? A lot of people switch to that. <laughs> How do you know that like, he was a singer? Why switch that? I don't know. And mm. I'll tell you why you don't know Manson's real name. For whatever reason, because he's not the actual one that did the killing. Yeah, that's true. It was fucking Tex Watson and Squeaky Fromm and uh, Charles Watson. This is his real name, by the way. Charles Tex Watson. Charles Tex Watson. But they only wanted one Charles, and that had to be Manson. They didn't want yeah, two yeah. Charleses in the group. Oh, well, what was, right, can we yeah. hear the rest of that? I don't want to know what his point was. Yeah, what's his fucking point? That, no, that's who, where it ends. Who cares? Uh, yeah, let's go to Mike. I'd New love York. to know what he said after who cares. Mikey, you should. Hey, what's going on, boys? Hey. hey. Hey, I have a question. If Jesse Ventura is such a fucking patriot, then why isn't he just telling us the answers instead of going, read my book? Ah, you know something? Great point. If he was such a patriot, this shit should just be, he should be out preaching this from a soapbox instead yeah. of uh, trying to sell Amen. a book. You're right. Great point. You're writing a book, fine. But when he says, how do you know this, how wouldn't you immediately... Help us out. Say how you know it. Right. Help us. Help us, Jesse. Don't ask a question about Chattanooga. Immediately Chattanooga. say. Chattanooga. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Immediately say how you know, because this way it can prevent any, any elections that are happening now or next month. Let's say hi to Akiva from New York. Akiva. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, man. This, hey, this Jesse Ventura stuff is absolutely ridiculous. He is stealing his conspiracy theories from the movie Conspiracy Theory with Mel Gibson. All that stuff with the three names thing, it's all in that movie. The next thing you know, he's going to be saying, I bit Patrick Stewart's nose off. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that movie. <laughs> yeah, it's so, uh, it's so funny. Because I'll tell you this, I, I don't know where he gets his thoughts from, but when we were talking about Kennedy assassination, and I'm not qualified to argue pro Oswald through and through, mm. but when he said something about Oswald couldn't have made that shot, he said things that made me think. That he had just watched JFK, yeah, yeah, and gotten his knowledge from that. You know what? I don't think Jesse Ventura is a smart man. I don't think he is. I, I think he can read some stuff and watch a movie or a documentary and come up with some factoids. But I don't think he's a. I don't find him intelligent. He said he didn't use a computer. It's like how can you research exactly with the amount of material now available and all this stuff. Without I'm a off computer. the grid, because right I'm off the grid. Right on your phone. How do you watch? You can just be fucking getting knowledge wherever you are. The truth or videos. How do you watch all that stuff without yeah. a computer? Yeah. You have someone on video? Actually, you uh, put some on VHS for me. Oh, he does explain the three-name theory. I'm sorry, there is a part two to this. Oh, is there? So Larry said, who cares? And then I guess Jesse who said, cares? well, I'll, I'll tell you why. Here we go. Well, he's the most notorious killer in America. We don't know his middle Thank name, you. but all these soul lone nut assassins <laughs> were taught what all three that names. It means that it, it's a psychological preparation, Larry, to get you accustomed that only one person does the dirty work. Jesse Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's interesting. He didn't know what to you make what? of that, and neither did I. I'm sitting there going, you know what? what the fuck does that as mean? As much as we make fun of Larry King, that was the perfect way to deal with that. He flustered him. A long silence in a, in, in a, in a Larry King laugh. But what a bad example. Mark David Chapman did do the shooting by himself. Yeah, yeah. We know that. Yeah, there's no um, I don't know. Maybe Jesse would have a, another theory on that. Who shot... Uh, Oh my God! Who shot Reagan? Jesus Christ! John uh, Hinckley. Oh, John Hinckley. I don't know his middle name. Why? Because Reagan didn't die. He did it alone. Wait, what was Hinckley's? Yeah, we don't know his middle name. It doesn't come up. But you usually just say John Hinckley, right? It, yeah, it is simply a way of of what raising talking about the uh, level of importance of the figure yeah. who has done the shooting. It's a more dramatic way of saying it. James Joseph Norton confessed today. Uh, War Warnock. Look, John like Warnock Hinckley? 
a dumb fucking middle name. No look, one knows that. Look, I, no. I, I like Hillary a, Rodham. God's last name. Okay. I like a good conspiracy, but uh, I don't know, man. Jesse's not helping out the I people ain't that, it. that are into conspiracies. The three name thing is it, is an old joke. It's like a joke. I know. It's it's a, a bit. We all. A lot of people have middle names. Maybe Manson doesn't have a middle name, or if he does, it's Mills or Millis. Oh, he does. Okay, Miles. 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 But the media is the ones who put the names out there. Yeah. You read about it in the fucking paper. Ah, but the media is in with the government, Mr. Norton. So the government no, said, please. okay, look, keep that middle name under your hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why Why just... He's coming up. He's running out of conspiracies, this poor motherfucker. Well, he wants a second season. He wants a second season, <laughs> but there's no more conspiracies. Like, he's going to really he's have gonna be to doing dig Bigfoot. Deep. He's going to do Bigfoot. Yeah, Bigfoot. Big, the second I see him in the woods you know fucking with, a, with a tape measure on a big footprint, it's so over. <laughs> it's so over. He's out. Why? Mm. So there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no. Middle name. Oh, oh, you know what? Okay. Dan, go ahead. Not a bad hey, theory up, right here from Hello. Dan. Um, I was thinking that they used the middle name to, to not confuse everybody when they made, announced the name on the news. You Maybe. know, like if it's James Joseph Norton, we know it's Little Jimmy. But if it's James Norton, it could be, you know, 100,000 Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy. maybe that is a way of making it more specific and directly connect you to a person. Good good point. Yeah, because it's such a horrific crime by this individual that everyone's going to know about in, in the uh, the world. Maybe that's a way uh, where the media covers its ass, too. Yeah. I kind of like your theory there, sir. And good it's, job. Cool, man. Cool. The whole Kennedy thing drives me. It's just so yeah. idiotic it's... that they got Oswald to do it. No, they... Didn't. Look at the big conspiracy. Come on. It was great. Everyone, they got away with it. It's, 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 it drives oh, me crazy. Giant conspiracy. There's so many easy ways to do things. It's like, why would they have allowed why? Oswald to be questioned by the police captain for two days? Rigorous questioning. Why wouldn't they? Why would they allow Oswald to kill JD? T why wouldn't they just kill him after the assassination? Yeah. Why right would you there. allow him to ever fucking be taken into police custody? Well, he to have did a movie it. do it. He uh, he shot the president, and we got him coming out of the place, and we shot him, and uh, end of story. There you go. Or when he gets away after he left the book depository because yeah. he went home, fucking have somebody Plenty kill him Plenty of time there. before he kills another cop, before, and, and and then uh, you have to have Ruby do it days later. For what reason? And now there's a living witness, Ruby. Right. Yeah. yeah. What you do is you fucking shoot him. Who died of natural causes in, in jail. Cancer. Yeah. Plus, so it plus you're like, giving the guy time to, to babble about if it. If he was and, in on it, wouldn't you kill him too? Yeah, all of a sudden he has second thoughts and decides, I got to fucking say, no, 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 they put me up to this. It would have been easy for like, oh my God, Jack Ruby, so I'm, I'm a Kennedy fan. Right, right. Kill, uh, or uh, a, fan, a guy that didn't like Kennedy, uh, kill Jack Ruby in jail. Oh boy, look at what happened. If they wanted to keep it all nice and clean, you're right. Meanwhile, he never left the fucking... The, uh, book depository. Or, or when he went home, because he took a cab, they would have had they would have killed him and faked his suicide. But no, they allowed him to be fucking taken in, questioned by the police, the FBI, the Secret Service. Exactly, Jimmy. Fucking walking exactly. back and forth in front of reporters, yell, answering reporters' questions. Yeah, that's what they would have allowed. Yeah, he, he did a perp walk. Silly. <laughs> and talked. Silly. <laughs> Silly. Let's say hi to Christine in Huntington. She knows a lot about Charles Manson. Oh. Christine. Hi, how are you? Good. Hello. First Hello. First time caller, long time listener. Quack, um, quack. His, his uh, middle name was Millis, M-I-L-L-E-S, mm -hmm. um, Charles Mills Manson, um, but he changed the M to a W to make it Charles Willis Manson because he thought he was Jesus Christ. Charles Will is Manson, um, his man's son. His mother was a prostitute. Oh. His father was black. Is why he didn't like black people. He's half so. well. He thought he was going to lead blacks after the race riot. Is, it, are they, is he half black and half white? Yes. Oh, I didn't yes. know that. There's He's half... uh, documentation. Um, his, uh, Colonel Scott was his father's name. He was in the military. His mother was a prostitute. So um, that's basically you know. And then he took the adopted name look half black. Manson. He took the adopted name of Manson when his mother shacked up with somebody by the last name of Manson. So. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. I didn't yeah, know the half black thing at all. He doesn't look half black. Maybe she was a light skinned yeah, black. I don't know. Maybe he's a light skinned black, but, mm. she, but that's why he's the he father or the black mother? Father. People. Father. All right. So, did he hate black people? Uh, mongrel race of murderers. <laughs> he actually did. didn't sorry. murder anybody. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. <laughs> that right, is amazing. You. He's in jail that long and really never physically did it. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't want to get out at this point, though. No, he loves it in there. 
What a field day um, he's having. By the way, he did kill somebody. He killed um, Shorty Shea, who was a ranch hand at, uh, at Spawn Ranch. She actually chopped his head off, cut his uh, body into seven pieces, and they found it buried behind the ranch. They dug it up recently. You're um, a sick, sick bitch. Where, where yeah, do you, do you come up with all this? How do you know all this? <laughs> why um, do you know all this? My father's a cop, so I've been interested in all this stuff from a very early age. And, yeah. Uh, Actually, I went on a Charles Manson tour last summer in California. So oh, have, sweet. Yeah, it was interesting. So, Disney uh, uh, do that? It's uh, <laughs> called... I'm sorry? Nothing. <laughs> well, the house is gone. Um, I know that. something called uh, a death tag tour, where they actually do a tour. I went to uh, the 40th anniversary of Sharon Tate's death. So I actually went up to the house. It was pretty interesting. Oh. Some pictures. Uh, Give you some Folgers <laughs> coffee along the way to drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Folgers coffee. Wait. Oh, the house is still there. Who lives in it now? Um, actually, the um, the executive producer Full House owns the house. But um, Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails and Marilyn Manson actually recorded it. Yeah, of course they did. Yeah, I knew that. Man. How dark. <laughs> Man. Yes, there was a pregnant woman stabbed in the, in the fucking, in the twat here. We'd love to make a song. <laughs> oh, how dark and scary. <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> you don't fucking like that. No, it's uh, corny. <laughs> fucking a pregnant woman was massacred there. And you want to you wanna give credence to that fucking those jizz bags by fucking... They need an inspiration, yeah. man. Like the dark it's forces. Dark and evil. This place is full of evil. It would be inspired, man. man. And just some coffee broad sitting there with dentures and coffee breath. And they fucking cut her throat. Coffee breath. Some asshole wants to go there and strum a guitar. You think they had a seance, man, uh, before they recorded? Nine Inch Nails. Those guys are dark. I don't understand them. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> fucking shitheads. Why don't you stand where Reginald Denny had a toilet bounced off his face? <laughs> Fucking play the harmonica. <laughs> Shitheads. You know, Jimmy, that's very logical right there. Oh, shit. Fucking cornballs. Right. <laughs> you think it's a bit corny? It's fucking really corny. Yeah. Trying to man. associate yourself. Wow, man. this guy's dark. I think they wrote Helter Skelter on the wall for, like, inspiration, too. Man. Yeah, this what would happen. Can you brooding guitar. I can feel it. Can you man. find an article on this? Because I'm sure in the article, uh, Trent says some douchey things about, of course his, he does. about his time at the house. Well, uh, you, you could feel that something... No, you couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you couldn't. The riff came to me, man, when I was in the same room alone. I just felt it, <laughs> I got, man. I need, yeah. an, I need an article on this. Uh, Why don't you record in a hospital room where some old lady was fucked to death <laughs> by three orderlies who have since been let go? Why don't you go in there and play the fucking spoons? <laughs> fucking brooding cunt. Paper in a comb. <laughs> brooding cunt. Fucking dullard. <laughs> fucking so sick of the dark, misunderstood musicians. I kind of like uh, Nine Inch Nails, but you know what, Jimmy? A God, lot of bands. No, have, no, no, but God bless. Have you. done it in castles. God I don't mind you. a castle. Or, you know, Zeppelin did, the Zeppelin did it in yeah, Aleister yeah, Crowley, I think. Yeah. Aleister Crowley. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. He's, a, he's kind of a historical. But he's not really responsible for slaughtering a pregnant woman, to the best of my knowledge. He had a few animals die, and Mussolini did kick him out of Italy. He was kind of a sick piece of shit. A naughty boy. He was a dirty one, Aleister Crowley, but... God damn. Uh, yeah. I don't think he sent a bunch of fucking drugged-out hillbillies to kill a pregnant lady and some chick that just wanted Sanka to be put out of business. That's all she wanted was Sanka to go away. He hated Sanka. I think DiMaggio was behind that. Because <laughs> the whole Mr. Coffee feud, he was fucking... You know, like, Man! <laughs> Uh, what do we have? About, what, what did Trent? What song did he record? Or what album? Yeah, we're getting some info. Did they record in the house? Oh, uh, there is the info. Yeah, man, here it is. All right, let's read this. Let's All see. right, let's see. Nine Inch Nails, second full-length album, The Downward Spiral, uh, Billboard chart ninety-four. Good album, by the way. Two. Gotta say that highest-selling Nine Inch Nails release to record mm -hmm. the album. Reznor rented and moved into. 150, you know, 10 0 5 0. Uh, how do you pronounce that? I don't Cielo know. Drive, I'm Cielo. guessing. Cielo Drive. Uh, the mansion, site of the 69 Manson family murders, man. Uh, Reznor built a studio space in the house, which he renamed Le Pig, after the word that was scrawled on the front door <laughs> in Sharon Tate's blood by the murderers, man. 
Resnick told Entertainment Weekly that despite the notoriety attached to the house, he chose to record there because I looked at a lot of places and this just happened to be the one I liked oh, most. You Shut fucking up. phony. Shut up. You're fucking trying to cover your ass. What about a ass? studio? How about a recording yeah, studio? Yeah, you're just covering your ass. Why would you look there to begin with? Why yeah, wouldn't you yeah. go into all these studios? It's, it's fucking California. There's nothing yeah. but what all... Hey, uh, let's look over here at RCA. Let's look, Hey, let's check out that place where the fucking pregnant lady got her stomach yeah. cut open. <laughs> what a prick. And why do you name it after what they wrote on the wall if you weren't there for that reason? You had to say fucking that because I'm sure bag. a bunch of yeah. people said, uh, you're fucking exploiting the murder there. Uh, we did our next album at Jeffrey Dahmer's house while an Asian man had a hole yeah. drilled in his head. Yeah, we called it La Hungry. <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> fucking creep. Yeah. <laughs> Dolt. Yeah, why, why do you do it where a fucking a pedophile like raped a kid or something? Like, I guess that's not as attractive and dark nah, and scary. No, man. You need some time to go by. You need a legend attached yeah. to it and everything, of course. We taped it in this pedo's house. We called it La Hairless Weenie. <laughs> you fucking bucket of jizz. Fucking asshole. Trent Reznor is so overrated. It drives me nuts. Uh, oh, we got some more info? Oh. Do we have more info, man? Yeah, man. Oh, just leave it there, then. I'll, I'll get a lot. Um, while I was working on Downward Spiral, uh, Spiral, I was living in the house where Sharon Tate was killed. Then one day I met her sister. It was a random thing, just a brief encounter. How is and it a random said, thing? I know. She said, are you exploiting my sister's death by living in her house? For the first time, the whole thing kind of slapped me in the face. And I said, no, it's just sort of my own interest in American folklore. I'm in this place where a weird part of history occurred. I guess it never really struck me before, but it did then. She lost her sister from a senseless, ignorant situation that I don't want to support. When she was talking to me, I realized for the first time what it was my uh uh what if it was my sister i thought fuck charlie manson <laughs> i went home and cried that night it made me see the other side of things oh, you know God. all right you know what that, Man! that does make me like him a little more because he, yeah, he then he realized like yeah this is a real thing all right i hope it wasn't of... her sister and it was just some bitch fucking with him i hope it was manson's <laughs> sister and she was more she's like why aren't you helping charlie get out <laughs> All right, that makes it a little better. Oh, but there's so many God. great places you could go, but they just picked the safe one. <laughs> you, you understand where James Earl Ray fired the shot and sing country western music? Let's see how yeah. that fucking flies. Jesus Christ! I heard uh, Foundry recorded where Charles Nelson Riley died. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> yes, we recorded Pendulum. I could smell poppers <laughs> and ass. In the room, I could still smell it. I wrote penis on the wall just so it was something tasty I could look at. <laughs> Le pig in a blanket because I like an unclipped cock. Uh, yes. yes, Thomas Stephen Carlisi. <laughs> Three names, man. Yes. I went into a buddy booth where a man's penis was kicked through a glory hole. I put on tap shoes and did my Gregory Hines tribute. <laughs> yes, I was inspired when I saw a huge, well-hung black man's weenie swinging back and forth. The song was Pendulum. Yes, and I named it La Horse after the size of his cock. <laughs> yes. They're actually recording in my old producer's office. They've named it La Lazy. <laughs> they wanted to record in a place where absolutely nothing has ever happened. <laughs> yes, monks are doing chants in there now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they call it ch cheeseburger. <laughs> they should call it the fired. <laughs> 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 Holy shit! Ah, fuck. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It was very special yes. foundry recording. Yes. Yes. yes, they're actually recording an album on my stomach. They've named it Le Staples. <laughs> 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 and on my back, labeled Le Calm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, we got to take a break. Uh, two quick things, though. 
I was right. The house was torn down in '94, uh, was. and the guy that now lives there, he built uh, uh, you know his current home on the spot. Oh, what a guy! And uh, is it true there, Jimmy Ozzy did Bloodbath in Paradise? Was that a song about Manson? Yes, it was. Okay. But it's a singing, I'm not talking about singing a song about something. I'm talking about actually going into Exploiting the... Exploiting. Yeah. For your own... <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Ozzy also sang about Jimmy Swaggart, and he sang about fucking, you know, the O.J. murders. He sang about a lot of stuff. All right. We didn't get Jesse Ventura on our show yesterday. I wonder why. But he was on everybody, everyone else's show here at Sirius XM. I mean, everyone. Everyone got to talk to him except for us. I Good. saw him when he's I left a, the studio. He's a little crybaby for not oh, coming no, on Oh, no, we missed show. the big interview. Yeah. He gives I a mean, shit. How about you come in here and confront us if you're a big tough guy? Exactly. I uh, want positive press. And the only reason I say that is because he was talking about Jimmy on on every other show. Oh, I got well, I got I got three examples of other shows that uh had Jesse on that were talking about Jimmy. Well Jimmy was right here. You could have come in and fucking talked to him. And I actually really haven't badmouthed him since that, like on DJ Shea, because they called in. They said, look, Jesse's called. I've called a few shows. They've called, and I haven't trashed him. <laughs> You're hysterical. That's like saying, look, we only bombed the Japs twice. But I mean, like, <laughs> I would rather badmouth him for real. Yeah. Like, if he was here and we were arguing. I would. I, I kind yeah, of weird. Yeah. See, like, even Maxwell, when he got fired in Cleveland and they asked me about it, mm -hmm. eh, he's not there to argue back. So oh. it's, it's like I'd prefer to do it when a guy's here. We knew in the end Maxwell would get fired. We always knew that. Jesse could have come. We in. always knew that he was he was not long for this business. That jack off. But you know, you know what I'm saying. Off. You know what I mean? It's like he could have come in. He was in the building. Yeah. So Jesse yeah. did everyone else's show. We got the audio as uh, they asked about Norton. So I'm we sure got it's that riveting audio. Yeah. You got Jesse Please Ventura who stopped by yesterday to do everyone's radio show except ours here at Sirius oh, XM. No, that's our punishment for confronting him and being nasty when he was nasty, or my punishment yeah. who for cares? questioning his conspiracy theories. And, and we, we didn't like the personal it, nasty insults, but who gives a fuck? Didn't. And we have a much bigger audience than all the shows he did, except for Howard. I'm not going to fucking front here, I but the rest of these shows. The rest of these shows he did, there's, there's no real audience. No, no offense to these guys. They're building an audience every day. But uh, we have a huge audience, and he avoided us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here on the Broadway channel. Are you? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You know what? In between show tunes, he's telling fucking uh, conspiracy theories. You're not too far off. <laughs> I know. Maybe E-Rock or somebody down the hall could give me a list of all the shows Jesse the did. shows Jesse did. Except for ours. We got two. We got two shows uh, with audio that yeah, they have a nice audience. But then there are a bunch of other shows. I, I truly have nobody listening. Nobody. <laughs> and also we got the Eric uh, Massa thing. So which one you want to do? Uh, I need your, I need your I, I, help I, I, here. I like the. I gotta hear uh, Jesse. All right, we gotta go with Jesse. Yeah. All right, let's go with the Jesse Larry King. And by the way. After the show yesterday, after the show yesterday, Jesse was outside smoking a cigar. Yeah, and uh, me and Aunt walked out separately. You saw him. I didn't know you saw him. Yeah, and then I walked out and I had my HD flip and I saw him. So I just kind of followed him down the sidewalk. And everyone's like giving me shit. I was just trying oh, to. Yeah. I was just trying to make a dumb, silly, dopey video. I didn't feel like confronting Jesse Ventura. Oh, I, oh what, what you did? Everyone's like, why didn't you confront him? Like, because I don't care enough to confront him. Why he wasn't on our show? First of all, it wasn't my fight. It was Jimmy's fight. You could have had the flip in front of your face and your hat on. He wouldn't know who the fuck. That's you what are, I was thinking. And just be going like, "Hey, Jesse. Yeah. How you doing? Well, oh, well I shut up. I'm, I'm looking for conspiracies. Well, I was surprised that I even saw him on the sidewalk. And then I, I, I'll be honest. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Yeah, I had the HD flip. I, I turned it on to do try to do something, and then I wasn't even going to post a video, and I did it anyway because it was like, "Hey, this is kind of weird." That all of a sudden I would just run into the guy outside the studio. So yeah, I saw him. But talking for the people, I I, I, did, I wanted to make something silly and dopey, not not go for some big over the top confrontation with Jesse Ventura on the streets of New York. I asked him though, without being nasty, oh, Jesse, why didn't you come on? We could have worked I this guess, out. I guess I could have, and he could have punched I get in it. the face on the street. Nah, he wouldn't. Have. <laughs> I don't think he would have yeah, either. You but. never know. But that was my. Nah. But that, I wouldn't be worried about seeing him at all. Yeah. yeah. But no. that that was my intention. I was like, I, a, I didn't know what to do, and b, I was more trying to do something silly. Uh, but with that said, Jesse did uh, Cavino and Rich, and God bless these guys. They asked about uh, the conversation between. Uh, I like those uh, Jesse Ventura and Jim Norton. They're on Stars. They do afternoons on Stars. They're stars. Super chill. Well, I remember last time you were here, um, I remember you were down the hallway uh, with the Opie and Anthony show, and you got in a fight with Jim Norton, and that became like a big YouTube thing. They're all bad. Right. You're sure of that? 
Yes. Were the bodies identified? No, but that's taking ah, that argument. Ah, they, well, we'll just fly with that. What the hell? My government told me that. So, you know why I don't believe my government? Well, you believe Saudi Arabia's government no, no, no. over there flying? I remember, no. I remember you getting a big fight with Jimmy Norton, then he, uh, you, you gave him a pat on the way out, and he got all fired up, and you guys were fighting. Uh, no, no, it, he said something personal, derogatory, and very insulting to what, me. I, what did he say? I didn't hear I don't even thing. remember, because he's such a... <laughs> God, he can't say that! He, can't, he, de he does remember... You really fucking hit a, a that, nerve with that, him. That no, riffraff line was yeah. after everything, uh, when he was in the hallway. Exactly. So Jimmy didn't say anything while he was still in nope. front of a microphone that was no. personal and insulting. The only personal insult, and I never would have insulted him like that. Uh, that that bugs me, because that's just not honest. That's, that's not that true. Honest. Was no. that when he touched me, Yes. we were going back and forth. He called me an asshole, I called him an asshole. It was two guys just arguing. Mm -hmm. When he touched me, I, I've said this a million times, that's what bothered me because then the only way for me to come back at him, I'm not going to get into. You can't a, physically intimidate. No, I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to get up and pat right. him angrily. Yes. Because then that's taking it to a level like, oh, what am I, a fucking suicidal? <laughs> so I did what I do. I insulted him. That was the only way to come back without looking like a complete bitch and a pussy was just to insult the guy. What was I going to do? You know, I didn't realize until I just heard him say that. How that affected him. That, you fucked him up with that line, man. And I saw it on his face. He wanted yeah. to... That yes. really got to him. It really did. But again, if he hadn't touched me, <laughs> if he hadn't sarcastically slapped me on the back, I never would have oh, said that to him. Shit. Ever. You fucked he did him. touch you. Really annoyed yeah. him. Dude, I <laughs> never would have said that to him. Thank you, Danny, for pulling what out a great every riffraff picture. <laughs> what a great reference. It is so good. You... Killed him. If with we're that gonna line. Hey, look, if you want to, if, if we're arguing about points and we're disagreeing yep. and we're insulting each other, it's not very nice. And you want to use what you'd got? Yeah. Well, then I'll use what I got. He has physical intimidation and strength and the ability to squish you like a little grape, which he could do. And you have the ability to fucking say something that fucking personally insulted and hurt him. He'll never be able to hurt my feelings, but I've he could done, throw me through a wall. I have done far worse mm. than kill you, well, Jesse. I hurt you. Let's, and I'll continue to hurt you. Let's get back to the audio. What Rapid did he say? I, didn't hear I don't even thing. remember because he's such a... He don't mean nothing to me. And uh, all I did was turn around and I looked at him and you know what went through my mind? What? I thought, you're lucky, boy that I'm civilized today. <laughs> because I said, if you would have spoken to me like that when I was a Navy SEAL, oh, I'd have cut your balls off and shoved them down your throat. Jimmy didn't have balls back then. Exactly. They hadn't dropped yet. I was <laughs> just a wee lad. a little kid. What are you going to do? Throw him down the stairs with the, with kiss? So, he wants, so what he wants to be able to do... Is he wants to be able to call me? Helen would have kicked his ass. Yeah, Helen would have fucking really stuck up in her beehive. She would have beaten Jesse with her beehive. <laughs> Am I the only one that thinks Jesse Ventura rocks, though? <laughs> Why? <laughs> if he just said that when I was a Navy SEAL, I think you got to worry he, about the the uh, uh, VC that are coming after you. He rocks because he's such a character. Well, yeah, he really he's a is character. a fucking character. I, I would have, I would, I would have respected him. I would have thought he rocked if he came in. And we had it out. We just talked about it. I wouldn't have to argue with him yeah. again. I'm very well, reasonable. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. I mean, <laughs> don't fucking do that to me and then bitch when I insult you. Stop. Oh, you fucking nailed Stop him. it. I got another 10 clips. I don't know how many of these we're going to play. Wow, all but of everybody them. was asking about the confrontation he had with Jim Norton on our show. I want to hear it every one of those <laughs> clips. <laughs> it continues on the Cavino and, uh, Cavino and Rich show, Stars. They were on another channel. What happened? They were, Well, Maxim was discontinued, but those guys are very good, so they didn't want to lose them, so they put them on. They put a bunch of shows that they liked on Stars, I think, when they got rid of a couple of channels after the merger. I what think. is Stars? Is that like a talk station stars. channel? I think so, yeah. Yeah? They have some good shows. I have no idea what this place does. Jesus Christ, I know. This channel and Lithium. That's I know it. this one in the Boneyard. Uh, that's pretty that's much it. it. Yeah. Mm. Although, although, okay. Try I'll, Classic Rewind. I'll occasionally go to Hair Nation. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Alt Nation. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, 
Um, that that's really where I draw the line, and maybe like the '80s channel for just some nostalgia, yeah. so I could think back and go, "Oh, I remember that." Wait, is this the Cavino that that does the show? Yes, with of Nicole? course he does. Dude, he does double duty. What the hell are they doing Hot around duty. here? How many shows do these people have to do? <laughs> he does. He comes in the morning. <laughs> How many shows? <laughs> How afraid of being fired on? is he? I love this guy. <laughs> he's a, he's a. Could you do overnights too? Sure, I'll just put up a tent. I'm on it. He does mornings here on the on the the mashup, mm -hmm. and then he fucking I guess does some. Prep or shot. I don't comprehend. I'm, and then he just does the afternoons. Could be an Wait, he works more than four hours a day? What's Dude, he works like 12 guy? hours a day. He's what? an animal. What the hell's wrong with him? He must be young. No wonder we'd never see him in the elevator. <laughs> yeah. He's always here. <laughs> While we're fleeing the building. <laughs> yeah. That's what we do. We don't leave. We flee. <laughs> he'll, he'll fucking survive. No matter what happens to this shithole, he'll be here. He's like roaches. Nothing is stopping fucking Cavino. <laughs> Uh, well, Cavino, <laughs> man, God bless Cavino and Rich. They had balls. It continued. Yeah. There's conspiracy there, Rich, because, because we had Jimmy uh, Norton on our show that day. Hold on. Here's a and, Jimmy and Norton. He felt said. like you uh, you chumped him, like you pulled the ah. alpha male card on him when you when you made contact with him. Hold on. Oh, Here, here's, what, here, here's what he said. It yeah. really was a, pa a sarcastic pat on the back, but I didn't like it because we were two guys who were angry at each other, and we were genuinely mad at each other, and he still, because he's a big guy, felt comfortable Pulling some alpha male shit like that, like I knew what he was. I don't like yeah. being fucking touched nah, when I'm angry. Because I'll be telling you, if him and Chuck Liddell were arguing, I'm not saying he wouldn't argue with Liddell. Of course he would, but he wouldn't go over and touch him like that on the way out because he knows he'd get fucking punched in the mouth. Is, is that oh, true? Bull crap. I sure would because all I did was I gave him a pat like, hey, that was a pretty good argument we just had. Oh my! No, you God. didn't, Jesse. Took it the wrong. He took that. Oh. No, you didn't. No, that was a, a an aggressive as move an observer that he did because yeah. he knew that that was what he had yeah. to try to intimidate you. And, with. And, and it was it was that he's just not being. Maybe he remembers oh, wow. it that way, but I don't think he's being wow. honest. Because he goes, if he if he said, hey, look, man, it was fun arguing with you and did that. But he goes, thanks for your service to your country. Yeah. Like, I knew what that was. He was angry at me at that point because we weren't being, he's just, he's just not. I'm not going to say he's lying because maybe he's told himself that, but that's not what happened. I it's, never would have insulted him if he was being friendly. It's just a jump to the left <laughs> and then a step to the right. Put your hands on your hip, right? But I never would have. But you he know, took it the wrong. He took he it like took you it were. The wrong. Yeah, he took it that I was being condescending. I can tell him without a doubt I did, did the same thing. I'd do it to Muhammad Ali. I'd do it to anybody Mal. else, too. It was not meant as anything derogatory. I know how I did it. All I did was give him a little pat on the shoulders. I went out and, you know, kind of like, well, well, we'll maybe see you next time. See, he was going after me because the, the th what's better for him? You think he's going to get an ounce of publicity if I wasn't the other equation, well, how he was Victoria doing that it? simply just to get his own publicity at my expense. Oh, my God. It's just, you know, honestly, no, no. dude, it's, it's just, just not the truth. Yeah, Jimmy's doing Leno. I mean, he's doing God, just he? fine. Dude, man. I don't Let me tell you something. Holy I don't care shit. about a YouTube video that got a half a million hits. I don't care. One appearance on fucking Red Eye is the same amount of people. One appearance right. on Leno, There's even when the show wasn't that. doing well, is it, fucking six times exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. I don't care about a YouTube video. What I love is uh, that the gang here at Sirius XM, Jesse was trying to avoid us at all costs yeah. yesterday. Wanted no and, part of it. And and it's great that these other shows were like, fuck Calling that. Calling them out. Fuck that. We we want to talk about you know that big confrontation I had with Jim Norton. Mm. He should have came in here. It he, really was. I, I that that and look. What's he gonna say? But it, to think it's for publicity, it's like, come on, dude. Well, That's just not honest. He did, uh, yesterday, some of the shows he did. Cavino and Rich, Alex Bennett, Oof. Mad Dog, POTUS, Howard, and uh, Blubba. Blubba. Did POTUS? And he's also doing The View today. Ah, 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 so maybe see? The, ah, 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 stop. So maybe he'll uh, be asked some tough questions on The View today. The View. Uh, and well, it continued on Camino and Rich. How does Jesse Ventura handle stuff like this? I mean, when you come at people with conspiracies, 9-11 conspiracies, yep. Federal Reserve, yeah, I'm, 2012 I'm, I'm aliens. guessing Jimmy Norton's not the only guy that's ever got mad or yeah. uh, fought with you about a 9-11 thing. Yeah, but he's the, he's the only one that's made it personal and insulted me personally. You know, I, you can disagree with me all you want. You can say, Jesse, you're full of it. This, this is nothing. You know, this is baloney. How can you believe it? But when they take it beyond that and they make a personal insult to you, that's a whole nother ball game. Wow. Just like in the world of politics. 
You know, you can disagree with another elected official. You can disagree on policy all you want, but you don't make it personal. Ooh, well, well, what's he, can you pause that for a second? Because he's, he's saying this is not exactly the opposite of what happened. Yes. He called me an asshole first. Yeah. Before I called him an asshole, he called me an asshole. Yeah. We were arguing. I wasn't making it personal. I didn't agree with his point of view. We were going back and forth. And then he goes, something, something, asshole. He and then I said something, asshole. Very personal. And we, He's taking this very personal. He called me an asshole first. He called me something else first. Asshole! But he's talking about the riffraff line. That, I know, re no, no, that really, really got to him, and he's and he's confusing the whole thing. That was pretty much the last thing you said to him as he was in the hallway. That Pardon my French, <laughs> but you're an asshole! But he insulted me first. I would never have insulted him personally if he had not insulted me but first. But he's basically saying you did the riffraff thing on the air when he was in front of a microphone, yeah, and that yeah, led yeah. to him walking out. That was the last thing, and that's the thing that still bothers him last to this day. Last thing that was said? Yes. Yeah, he, and then he, he looked at you glaringly like he wanted to rip your head off. But why doesn't he mention the fact that he started making it personal? It's not, it make, because that makes him look silly. And we have audio of that. That's what annoys yeah. me. So anybody out there, any of the Jesse fans out there, I've got no, the audio's emails. out there. It's everywhere. Just listen to it. It's everywhere. I don't care if you fucking truthers don't like i don't care your fucking your your angst and your anger oh, and your rage Jimmy are meaningless gatekeeper <laughs> just the don't gatekeeper. make it personal Ooh, well what's crossing the line for jesse ventura what was it i i know he said something about your hairdo what what, what was it what really <laughs> i don't wrong. even remember False. again he would he's such a nothing to me why would i dwell on him the minute i left that room he was old news. I don't, you know, I don't even, today, you just told me his name. I don't even know his name. Oh, and if you oh, saw him today? Okay. Uh, I'd still recognize him because I've done the show two or three times. Mm -hmm. But would you snarl at him? Would you give, would you intimidate the guy or would you just give no, him a high I, five? I would simply ignore him. Would you? Simply. But the bottom line is this. If. Who did you fucking get? If, to if. <laughs> I know. It's so it's again, fucking, it is. I'm stunned at how badly you got it. I thought he like, I thought he was very pissed right then and there. At, at, at you saying that, and then he probably did just walk it off. But let me tell you, that fucking is sticking with him. What, what you, let me tell you what that was. And that is that what happened between me and Jesse Ventura is how you become a funny guy in high school. And this is why jocks leave you alone. <laughs> because it's like they can beat the sh all day long. He could throw me through a wall. I will, yeah. it, it, no matter how sick he was, if he had brain cancer, I, this, I could never best him physically. No. And I would never try to. Nope. But guys like that never want to be embarrassed by what they would consider a little pipsqueak, and accurately so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. The jo the jock can punch you in the face. That'll fucking go away in a while. You can embarrass you know him. What? That shit sticks in their head forever. <laughs> and here's another question about what he's saying, the honesty of it. If you forgot right about it, why would you turn down a show with an audience the size that this show has. Yeah, you forgot it. This show has a massive audience. Yeah. So why would you turn down promoting whatever it is you're promoting? It's, it's, don't be dishonest. Just say, look, we were arguing. I got a little personal. He got personal back. I alpha mailed him a little bit. He insulted me and I didn't like Just tell the truth, man, I, about I, what happened. Talk it out on I, the I, air. I, yeah. I think to break it down, I think he uh, blew mm. off our show because he can't hang intellectually. I really believe that. I really believe that. Oh, he didn't have answers to a lot of the questions uh, ah. we were throwing at him that day. <laughs> Can I correct myself? Yes. I, I've made an ass of myself. It's Rich Davis, not Kavino, who's on the morning mashup. So sorry, Rich. I, I was saying Kavino was on the mashup, oh. and it's actually Rich Davis. Yeah, I get confused by that whole thing. I know. It's the guy that walks by every day with Nicole, right? I don't know we who's Rich and who's Kavino. It's, they're hot and they're sexy. We're, as too far busy as looking at, <laughs> we're too busy looking at Nicole's ass as she walks by every day. So I, Really? Who could be bothered with the guys' names? <laughs> right. Well, the fuck knows who they are? But that was great that they, uh, they asked him about it hey, and they got hey, it out. Good I like them, the balls man. on this kid. Yeah, that is a set of balls. I, I hear balls on this kid. Because he ain't stopping. Jesse's getting like so, pissed even talking about it, and he's just pounding he, away at yeah, him. He wanted to get to the bottom of some of that shit. Uh, and then Jesse moved on to Pete Dominic's show. We've had Pete on I our like show. I like Pete. He's a good comic. Hey. He's a buddy. Pete does a very good radio show. Uh, yes. It's politics, man. If you, you know, But he's he's strong. He's, he's on POTUS. He's very, very three liberal six guy. Uh, three to six, right. Very, very liberal guy. But he makes rational arguments. I mean, he's not a dumb guy. He's a smart dude. Dude, that can't happen. What? What? 
a uh, very liberal guy making rational uh, comments. Oh yes, they can. I've never seen it because the lib <laughs> the liberal snake, the lib like like Bobby Fischer, <laughs> the Jew is like a snake. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Bobby, would you just fucking let just, it go, just, Bobby? Just fucking King Castle side, would you? <laughs> <laughs> fucking please, just. <laughs> And here we go. Jesus, just <laughs> check out uh, Jesse Ventura, uh, his new book, American Conspiracies. I always love having you in here, man. It's really I like uh, doing your show too, Pete. It's a lot of fun having you. And and, and, uh, and you know what else? You don't run and cry if I leave and tap you on the shoulder. I would appreciate it if you'd punch me in the oh. face, actually, as hard as you can. That you don't run make... and cry like a baby and whine and jeez, he touched me. Oh, you're him. talking about Jim Norton? Oh no, Paul, oh. no. Oh wow! Yeah. I, I I thought you you forgot about the yeah. incident. You keep bringing I, and it by up. the way, first and of all, and, 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 and I didn't away. run and cry. You sat in that seat. I insulted exactly you, where stupid. And who, I insulted you. And yeah. who ran and cried? He didn't yeah. do our show. That's running. Jesus Christ! He was in the building at the time we were broadcasting. He left because we saw him on the street when we were finished. Jimmy was exactly where he was when he made the comment. Never moved. Sat in his seat. And Jesse left. He left. So who ran and cried? He said he, he ran and cried. I insulted ooh, you. He said he was done. You actually got a former governor to go. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that that Holy comment shit. really oh, fucked him up. Fucking killed him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. So, I, and I, like I said before, to this wait, day, you know I didn't understand how fucking much that got to him. You know, I know this. I know this audio has been played a million times, but can we go? Can we? Unfortunately, we turned the camera on just before he uh, got up. Yeah, I let's, wish we had that whole 20 minute lead up. Right, let's Will you say something. To me? Uh, you did it to me? You said I don't believe in the Constitution. My guys. My guess. See? Governor. You always just sulk and walk away. Why? No, you you I'm put not, words in my hey, mouth. Hey, there's a fucking guy here telling me I got a schedule, asshole. You're using dirty language, asshole. Yeah. See? Yeah. Oh. Drinks the water dramatically. Put the bottle okay. down. Bye, tough guy. <laughs> and thanks for your service to our country. You're welcome. Thanks for touching me with your fucking stupid rip riff raff and fucking Rocky Horror hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> You're bigger than me and stronger than me. So what? I don't give a shit. You want to beat me up? Go ahead. I'm right, not right. going to fight a guy like you. I, that means nothing to me. <laughs> I argued with you. You put words in my mouth, and you didn't like when I did it to you. You put words in my mouth saying, I didn't believe in the Constitution, and that's bullshit. It's not true. I don't agree with uh, uh, abusing it. Thank you for your service. Oh, uh, you're welcome. You're a bigger patriot than me. Godspeed. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> wow. Get the camera outside. And then we followed but him with the bad. camera. Do you see? Yeah. He called me an asshole. Wow. I called him an asshole. He said tough guy. Because, again, I'm a tough guy. If I insult a guy of his size yeah. back. So these, f I fucking hate guys like that because they want to insult you and then you're supposed to go, oh, okay. Don't try to be an intellectual if you just want to be a big, dumb jock bruiser. Just be that. And that pat was a little more than just to touch we, on the we shoulder. We all know what it he was. Really, mm. he, that first one was a, a, a pat. And the second one was a good smack he gave you. And again, it wasn't, I didn't feel like he was going to hurt me. I, I'm not going to lie and say I felt threatened. I didn't feel threatened. But the intent of it, the message behind it, annoyed me. I didn't cry like a baby. I insulted you. No. You were acting like, you insulted me, I insulted you. You were the fucking baby. Your cadence and tone, though, were so planes, trains, and automobiles. I know. I know John was. Candy. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it was so John Candy. I knew what he was thinking at that well, moment. I know. Well, I'm, 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 I'm just a little guy here. <laughs> you fucking. Because I knew it was going. Classic. I knew it was going through his mind. Don't just stare. We we both know what you're thinking. So just say it. You <laughs> just did not fucking stop. That was good. Can I point out something important? Uh oh, no, I think that's impossible. But go ahead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you sometimes you do it accidentally when you're pointing out things that aren't important. We're like, no, no, the wrong category. <laughs> Look a pinwheel. It's not important, Kenny. He he had nowhere to go. When he says in the video, I got a guy here telling me. I gotta go. I got a schedule. I thought I, I was, was standing alone. right there. Yeah. It was just Kenny was out in the hallway. Yeah, he came with a broad well, publicist. There was yeah. no guy with him. And and, and he if, was still. If you get the audio of the whole show, it's out there. He admits. I don't. I don't know. But uh, before the whole confrontation, that he has nowhere to go and he could hang out longer. And, and then all of a sudden he had somewhere to go because it got a little hot in here. And he kept pushing the microphone away. And he did that at K-Rock one time. He doesn't like when you argue with him. So he's not being straight when he says that. Right. No, he's not. So that's what happened. That's well, the end. Unfortunately, the, the audio we don't have right now, didn't. you don't hear well, the 20-minute lead-up, which people who heard the show heard. And it, and it proves he, he still rem 
he's still bothered by this whole thing because he brings it up on Pete Dominic's show. Yeah. Pete, Pete's like, oh, you're talking about Jim Norton. Like, he was going to let him go without even discussing sure, it. Sure, but I didn't find, th th let's be, that. that's what happened. Yeah. And uh, you're right, it was planes, trains, and automobiles. Oh, it was but, so much. But it was almost like in that moment, it wasn't like, I'm going to stand up and let's fight you. It was like, no. I know what you're thinking, and it annoyed me that he was thinking that. You pointed it out to him, too. It like, annoyed me. You, I think he felt like, oh, what, this guy's completely on to me. Now, he felt like naked standing there because you completely pointed out what he was thinking, what he was about. There was no, he couldn't trick you. Uh, into trying to think something else, and then you fucking you dealt him a knockout blow with that fucking line, dude. Yeah, that affected him and still does to this day. I'm a, I am amazed how badly you fucked him up with that line. But you're right. I was a planes, trains, and automobiles ass. Look, I really should have a dumb brick of weight. That's fine. I of, know. It's one of my favorite scenes, man. It, it's it just it, go it ahead, hurt same, me if you have to. The same case. You're right. I'm an easy target. target. I know. That's why it was so fun. Can we just? But let me tell you something. <laughs> I want to hear that part I, again. I, I, I like me. In that my context. wife likes me. My friends like. No, <laughs> my customers like me. My customers like. My, my I'm, I'm the genuine oracle. Where's the Jimmy Norton line? Because uh, I, I got to hear that again. I just got to hear that one again. again. Uh, let's get to the end of this yeah. uh, this one clip here from uh, Pete right Dominic's here? show. Uh, no, he wants the... the, the uh, yeah, I wanted the Jimmy yeah, Norton line. Well, well, I wanted the Jimmy Norton line oh, oh, oh. again. And then we'll play the planes train. We got that on disc. E-Rock, run it down here, yeah. please. Because we play it all the time. E-Rock, run. We'll play the Jimmy yes. thing, and then we'll play the, the planes train. E-Rock runs movie. like the blob in a bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> Had enough quakes All right. this month. <laughs> He's queuing that up. Let me uh, play the rest of this clip here from Pete Dominic's show. And you don't run make. and cry like a baby and whine and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're here. talking about Jim Norton. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Why, did, you, why, did you not do O and A? Why, I would think you would do it again. I mean, that was aw That was great. The way that you, yeah, that was awesome. I'm sorry. I thought that, you know, it was weird. I had you that day, and then and then Jim Norton came on my show that day, but we didn't really get in too far into it. But I wish you would have done that. I would have. I thought you handled that pretty well. Wow, he's like good for Pete, though, man. You should have done yeah, O and A. He's cool. right. And then, wow. And then uh, good for Pete. Ends with this. You're not going to say anything. No, I. He's just very lucky. Yeah. Because if he would have personally insulted me like that, which he did, I didn't mind him disagreeing. I saw you shake. I thought you were going to take him out. When he personally insulted me like that, I thought to myself, here's what I thought. I thought, you little weasel. I thought if, if this was back in my Navy SEAL days, I said, right now you'd have your balls tore out and they'd be shoved down your throat. Wow. That would have been. For doing that. Kind of thing. <laughs> that video went viral as it was. That would have really made it. You know, very popular. But Damn. Governor Jesse Ventura. I, I'm civilized now, so he's very lucky. Is he? He's yeah. lucky that didn't happen. You ever watch his comedy? He's a great comedian. Uh, uh, Forget about it. You know, <laughs> All right. No, I feel, if that would have happened back when I was 21, he would have been in serious freaking trouble. Oh, right. You All right. Again, asshole. don't try to recapture. The th you stop it. Yeah, stop We get dramatic. it. That, that was why I insulted him to begin with. Take that fucking big guy shit and fucking beat it. Wow. Stop. When I, he was 21, the more important things, the Kaiser was roaming all over Europe. <laughs> that, but that's exactly the, that thinking. Like, he still feels entitled because he's fucking 6'11". Like, yeah. Shut up. If he had said that... I would have ripped his balls off. Would you have, he, Jesse? He should have said, if he had said that after my Navy SEAL days when I was wrestling. Because that's another great reference to it. It's like, where, where were you all those days? Why weren't you fighting all the conspiracies yeah. when you're running around with a purple boa yelling at Vince McMahon? And meanwhile, you wouldn't have said that. Because uh, at 21, he probably had a full head of hair. Exactly. It wouldn't have made uh, sense. It wouldn't have made sense. I might have insulted his acting or something else. Rocky Horror hadn't even come out yet. Absolutely. So it would have just been really Jim Norton... Um, you would have been predicting the future. <laughs> Which would have been amazing. <laughs> we got Louis C.K. in Louis. studio. Louis. What's up, Louis? All right. All right. I Louis thought you forgot big, about us. A no. big star. Oh, no, Jesus. <laughs> Louis C.K., <laughs> that picture maker made him a big star. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great if you went up to Jesse Ventura back then and said, later when you're bald. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's, how here's yeah. how my comment will be on that. When he was 21 and I was like, uh, maybe I was one or not born yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wait. and wait When a movie... 
called Rocky Horror Picture Show comes yeah. out, there's a guy that's going to be called Riff Raff in there, and your hair is going to be like his. And he said that when I was 21, I'd have cut his baby balls off. Yeah. yeah. I'd have pulled them down out of his abdomen because they hadn't dropped yet. I love that. He couldn't avoid it yesterday. I just oh, love that. Great. But But do you understand how somebody who tries to be intellectual... These f I fucking hate these big guys that think they're smart, and they always revert to that. It's like, why would you even have to go to that? It's like if me and Louie or me and Voss or anybody were having an argument, it would just be two guys insulting each other. But when one guy is that size, these, these fucking dummies always go back to, I would do the you shut up. You know what up. I could do to you? Well, and then you would go to jail because it would be wrong and illegal. Exactly. Yes. They just sit here and act like an ape and fucking be big. <laughs> then don't sit there and try to make points and mm -hmm. get mad. Yes. Fucking, I just hate large guys that you... Stop thinking that's your ace in the hole, idiot. Is he a 9-11 conspiracy Of guy? course oh, he is. Boy, is wow. He. Do you remember once Jim and I were at this cellar and we were leaving and there was a group of people outside of like a little convention hall and they were all wearing t-shirts that say, you know, the government did 9-11. Of course they did. And we realized that they're, they're having a convention for that, like a group meeting. Yeah. But we catch them outside and they're just... It's after the meeting, so they're just uh, socializing and they're laughing and smiling and stuff. Going, hey Rachel, hey, it's great to see you. And <laughs> like they're yeah. just like, yeah, the, they're not talking about nine eleven. Now they see each other all the time, so now that it's 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 developed Inter that they're just pals. Life. And and uh, Jim was imitating one of them, going like, all right, well, it's, it's great to see you. Let's have dinner tomorrow. And uh, remember, steel wouldn't melt at that temperature. Bye anyway. <laughs> If I get yeah, home gotta safe. Throw one of those things <laughs> out. Yeah. Controlled explosion. Yeah. Remember, keep your eyes open. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see you later. Uh, uh, we know how it's going with your dog later. Hope that works out. You know? Yeah. Hope your dog doesn't crash like the government did. Hey, easy now. It's time to go home. Unbelievable. <laughs> Leave it at home. You know, don't bring it home with you. <laughs> the worst. Don't bring it home with you. Leave it there at the convention. <laughs> We're run. Yeah, the earthquake. The epicenter. The epi sorry, yeah, the, the epicenter. epicenter. But what I learned last night, not only do they know where the epicenter is, they know how deep it was in the ground. Isn't that amazing? How the fuck do they know that? Oh, they've come up with some really cool like shit. So I was like, well, this was only 33 feet below the ground, or no, actually it was deep, right? This yeah. one was deep or something, yeah. but they knew. I know. They had all the calculations immediately. It really is something. So, hmm. That's a thermite paint. They've painted the inside of the San Andreas Fault with thermite paint. <laughs> yeah, huh? Oh, well, why don't you just deny it? <laughs> All right, I'll deny it. That figures. Yeah, serve your country. Shut up. <laughs> Fucking idiot. It, it, Jesse Ventura. It's exhausting dealing with the truthers. Oh, They're just please. fucking annoying. Everything's a conspiracy, but, man. But, but they don't even have a, like, a sense of humor. Um, I, feel, I filmed a dumb video of Jesse walking away, and I was kind of imitating him a little bit, and then I didn't know what to do, so I just bailed. I wasn't going to confront Jesse. <laughs> and now all the truthers are all over my goddamn YouTube channel doing their truth thing. I'm like, I was just making a dumb video. Leave me the fuck alone. You're just a gatekeeper. Leave me There's the fuck alone. Truthers I'm not in, and I'm, gatekeepers. I'm not interested in you truthers and what you have to say. And now they're emailing me all sorts of manifestos and oh, this and that. Proof. I'm like... Here's irrefutable proof, yes. man. Explain this photo, okay? It's been explained 8,000 times, but apparently Dude, you won't listen. They go deeper than that with all sorts of freaking... It's just a bunch of fucking suburban white kids that need attention. That's what it is. Stop there trying to go. feel like you fucking meant nothing because mommy and daddy handed everything to you. Yeah. Stupid fucks. Yeah, because I was handed everything. Uh, now I have to make a difference on my own, man. I got to show that I'm a my own man, man. Where are the black <laughs> truthers? None. Mm. Oh, they're too busy they get, robbing stores. Exactly. They don't get involved in that nonsense. <laughs> Shooting each other all over the, the country, apparently. Holy shit, the weather gets nice and the guns come out. Well, Easter Sunday is gang initiation. Wow. Day. What? Easter is gang initiation day, which is why you had all this crap on 42nd Street. Is it Street. really? Yep. <laughs> what? How do you, you know, know this, James? Because I was a member of three different gangs. <laughs> oh, you were? <laughs> yes. Wait, wait, you were in the... Uh... Tranny lovers, sweet boys, <laughs> and fucking worthless third mic fucking... Wait, how no, do you, you know that Easter Sunday is an initiation day? Uh, it did every year. There's problems around this time. Why uh, do they pick Easter? Why can't they pick some Monday they do horrible they, day? The fucking cops should... The, the Easter's cops were the there. one day where everyone's happy. They're in their bonnets. They're fucking looking for eggs. The bonnets. <laughs> did, were, there, were there initiations uh, when you were in the Lords? <laughs> yes. The, the Lords. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
We had a we had a so embarrassing. Jimmy, you're so adorable. We, we had a shooting two blocks from where we broadcast. Fifty first and seventh. Yeah, yeah I, I, part I passed, of this crap. Yeah, what the yeah. fuck is that about? I was listening to it on Winds. Apparently, uh, people were getting shot with not only uh, BB guns but real guns as well. Yeah. Well, Someone well, got shot in the ankle. Yeah. That was and the a woman got shot in the face. I think that was the one up on 51st. Uh, well, shot Marvin in the face. What did she what? do wrong? <laughs> Why the fuck did she do that? <laughs> probably nothing. She was probably just walking mine in her own business like yeah. everybody else. That's so, usually what it is. Innocent bystanders just getting uh, and, nailed. And I want to thank Jimmy for letting everyone know after the fact that Easter Sunday is Initiation Day. I would have said I it's Saturday fucking, if we were here. I would have stayed, in, I would have stayed indoors yesterday. I don't think you have to worry on the Upper West Side oh, <laughs> if the uh, gang initiation hey, day. You know, those it's poodles, like me, I think I could walk around my neighborhood hey, man, without those, a problem. Those poodles could fucking leave a nasty bite on your Is ankle. that it? You have the poodle fighting going on in your neighborhood? You haven't lived until you've been bit by a poodle. <laughs> the but Lord. you can't judge a book by its cover, so I guess on Ooh. 42nd Street, when you see gangs in certain colors running around, you're supposed to feel comfortable walking. Yeah, yeah. Since you can't prejudge. And then my brother, who went with his son, he gets, uh, his thing is he gets a big thing of popcorn to start the game, right? Aww. Bit, nice big, po you know, thing of popcorn. Now the popcorn is half the size in a shitty white box with a Capital One logo. Now it's Capital One Popcorn. <laughs> there you go. You're getting your sponsorship out there. It is just uh, uh It's the corporations taking over, man. Man. Why doesn't Jesse Ventura investigate that whole thing? <laughs> the New World Order corporations taking over our popcorn. <laughs> I got stuck watching that, too. Yeah, Not we'll... stuck. It's the best thing ever. It's got to be the best Did show. you watch first uh, the first season? Because they gave us a, a free copy. No, I did not. Of the first show I, I of the next bothered. season. Dude. It's it's a scream. Wait, should I watch the first season or the second season? Uh, second season's coming up, I guess. Um, oh, you mean you watched? October. Oh, they gave us a disc yeah, of the yeah. whole first season. No, no, they gave us a disc of the first show of the second which season. Which you watched. Which I just watched over All the right. weekend. Yeah. It, it just had me roaring, especially after watching that parody of the guy doing... Uh, the wrestling Jesse. thing? Yeah, on the wrestling. Yeah, we got so much it's to just, do today. He, what, what was the first episode about? It was about, uh, I was laughing so hard at the whole thing. Oh, it was, um, no, I, I, I you know, something I completely forgot. It was, because uh, I also watched one about 2012, which I think was from last year. Right. Oh, this one was about Plum Island. Plum Island. Plum Island, right off of uh, the coast of Long Island. And are they using it for experimentation on animals and human beings? <laughs> and, and I'm watching, what the fuck is this? He goes, and then the best part. We're taking a boat out to Plum Island. I was a governor. I was a Navy SEAL. I should be allowed access. And, and then uh, Coast Guard, like... A little Zodiac starts following them. Yeah. There's the Coast Guard. They sure don't want us there. It's like, it's a fucking installation that no one's allowed in. Of course. I, they're turning us back. They're turning you back because yeah. they, they don't want the rest of your hair to fall out, no. Governor. <laughs> yeah, they're saving you. You know the, the you know how contaminated contaminated that island is at this point? And then they had the, remember the Long Island, uh, the Montauk Monster? Oh, that yeah. was in the news, and sure. it turned out to be like a, a fucking... Giant it was, squid or it something? It was a raccoon. Oh, that thing. Or, okay, I'm sorry. Yes. Or a turtle without its shell. They had some guy who amounted to nothing more than a blogger. Okay. Nothing more than a blogger, a conspiracy blogger. Sure. And he was like, uh, all uh, uh, Governor, all these animals have been washing up on shore, and they come from Plum Island. There's irrefutable evidence, people. I think we knocked the lid off this one. Oh my god! And and it was just proven to be something else. I but... think my my brother's a marine biologist, and he explained to us what it was. Yeah, yeah. What and, was and... it? I forgot. There was a there was an actual explanation for the mon. What was it called? The, Montau the Montauk monster. Monster that washed ashore, and it, it, was... it was either a dog that was in the water too long, or a yeah. raccoon, or when things end up in the oh, water. Oh, they're saying it was a raccoon, Danny. A raccoon. When, yeah, when it ends up in the water and, and the fur comes off and then it gets sunburned and shit. Right. It, it's just a fucking raccoon. Look, there it is on the internet, uh, Jesse. Yeah, well, you buy the government's line that it's a raccoon. Go ahead. <laughs> I was a Navy SEAL, and I've never seen anything like that when I was treading water. Looks like you were practicing your Jesse Ventura over the weekend. I, it was all <laughs> I was doing. 
Uh, yeah, my uh, my uh, my girly over the house there. Yeah, she could not deal. All I was doing all weekend was conspiracy stuff. Yeah, it's like, oh, we got to go to the Apple store. I've never seen an Apple in the place. <laughs> I want to talk to Steve Jobs about this Apple store. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jesse, the governor. Uh, uh, can I get in the stock room? No. <laughs> They won't even let an ex-governor in the stockroom to prove there are no apples in this. <laughs> right, Jesse? Well, it didn't matter. Everything became a conspiracy. What, so what are they? What is he saying about Plum Island? We all know it's a fucking that it's a place that is specifically made to um, uh, create things for germ warfare. It has nothing to do with you know anthrax and hoof and mouth, and they're trying to. Um, find cures for animal diseases. Mm. Uh, these are all animal disease things uh, that aren't transferred to people. It's a very secure island. That's why they didn't let Jesse on the fucking right. thing. It is a creepy island. Though. That's where we had to turn around. He At one point he goes, yep, we're being shadowed by the Coast Guard. And they had to use a telephoto fucking lens. To and you could barely see this little raft uh, uh, the Coast Guard raft. Right. It could have been. It could have been anywhere. That's funny. There I was. They won't let me on the facility. Of course they won't. It's a secure island. Plus they're, they're trying to work. Yeah, let them work. <laughs> let the poor fuckers just work, Jesse. Just trying to work. And then he gets in the boardroom with his people. Right. I want you to talk to this guy but, in New York who claims he knows an employee that saw everything. Who are the people, though? They're bloggers. Just other whack jobs. One guy was internet reporter, they called him. Oh, really? Internet reporter. You know what that is? <laughs> Big copy paste, copy paste. Oh, man, I now go to 10 o'clock and I can't handle it. Apparently, Opie and Anthony are dicks from an internet reporter is reporting this. Opie and Anthony are dicks. And how do you respond to charges? The show was a lot funnier on any W. I'm reading a website here from an internet reporter. Oh, Jesus. Might as well, right? It's exactly it. Same Come shit. On. Oh, that's great. All right, now I gotta watch the, I gotta watch Conspiracy with Jesse Ventura. Why did they tell Hannibal Lecter he could stay there <clears throat> on Plum Island? <laughs> He's a fucking ass. It was so goddamn funny to watch though. I gotta do we have an, another copy in the you office? Got, you gotta I don't think they actually one. gave me one. Because uh, now I gotta watch. Yeah, all the dramatic moves he does and the dramatic camera work. We were laughing that there's no fucking way the staff and the people that edit it right. and, and put together the clips and come up with the stock footage aren't roaring laughing at, at Jesse. Right. Directly laughing at him as he's got his arms crossed and they're doing that circular camera move around him as he's looking up at the sky like, I'll get to the bottom of this. No, you won't. Well, there, yeah, there he is with his arms folded. His first season was successful because they gave him a second season. Do you know apparently there's a giant shelter uh, underneath the Denver airport for um, political people and rich people for 2012? That's what he said. Oh, it's here. And then he, as he's driving out of the Denver airport, right. they see these pipes, right. these square pipes, right. and they slow-mo it. And he goes, there they are. No mistake in that those are going to be tunnels. <laughs> <laughs> because apparently there's tunnels from NORAD, yeah. Cheyenne Mountain Complex in sure. NORAD, to all, all the, way to the shelter under the Denver airport. Well, maybe they're just... maybe they're... Irrefutable proof, Opie. Maybe it's like Disney World where they got... Don't give me your poppycock. Maybe they got an underworld city or something because the airport's so big. They how need space the, for shit. How about the fact that a lot of times you got to kind of take a tunnel from the terminal to baggage? Right. You know, and th whatever it is. Of course. Uh, and there's trains and why if the airport is already built, why are they still excavating? They're still excavating and digging. He, well, he, maybe they're building something else near there. He, yeah, that's the government's line. He's going to ruin it for all you real conspiracy theory people out there. Oh, it's great. He's going to ruin it for everybody. It is great. Uh, hey, enough of these miners. Boy, are we fucking... Boy, are we strapped for stories in the news, I guess. Well, I... I nothing, I, nothing happening here? No, I understand it's a big story, but just how they re report it is ridiculous. I don't know how they're supposed to report it, I guess, but... Mm. 
Uh, let me say hi to Anthony. Hi. In Brooklyn. Hey. Oh. Anthony Good in morning, Brooklyn. Boys. What up? Good morning, boys. How you doing? Good, man. I got a question. Uh, what does Jesse Ventura think about this whole situation? Obviously, government conspirators <laughs> uh, uh, caused the collapse. What reasons? I don't know. I'm not privy to that. I tried to get into the mine, and I'm a former governor. And they wouldn't let me in. I was a fighter, a Navy SEAL. I tried swimming through the rock to get to them, but they wouldn't allow me. <laughs> what an ass. <laughs> he was on Larry King last well, night. Oh, God. Why do why you think I took that call? It segs right into well, well, Larry well, King. Well, on just uh, his dismissive and, and Jesse talking last night. His dismissive laugh is the best thing. Where it's like, well, 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 you can believe what you want. I know I was on the inside. It's like what? He's quickly becoming a joke for everybody now. He is a complete joke. I think we're we were early on this one, but I think I think the masses are starting to go. What uh, is up with this guy? He will never do our show again. By the way, we've tried. We yeah, tried yeah, to smooth things over a little bit because he's scaredy cat. He's scared of Jimmy Norton. Jimmy Norton. Jimmy Norton, who I believe uh, is a, a guest on our show today. Jimmy Norton I will be a guest on be our a, show. A guest, we got a guest. Uh, has that been confirmed? Now that he's uh, all about <laughs> Hollywood, he got us a great fucking uh, plug again last night on Leno. Again. 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 Yeah, he should be here within the hour for the first time in, uh, I think, a month or so. Yeah. In a while. He was house hunting out there in L.A. If you think those are the same miners that went down that are coming up, well, well you, you can believe that. Those people were killed, summarily killed, and imposters were put in their place from one of the flights from 9-11. What, Jesse? Exactly. What? You know, it's not too far off. Here's Jesse Ventura on Larry King last night. Some of the highlights. Are you are you enjoying doing that show, Jesse? I, I really like it, Larry, because first of all, I love to attack our government, you know. Uh, I know. They, they, it's an unending thing. You get tremendous amount of stories, and it keeps me vim and vigor, and, uh, you know, I oh, like to see the truth, and I think that my government's lied to me so often that this is a show that allows me to do that. Where is Plum Island? <laughs> Plum Island is... <laughs> he is the best! Why does he have to retire? Where is Plum Island? I love plums when they turn them into prunes. <laughs> Where is <laughs> Where is Plum Island? This guy used to be a great interviewer, too. Man. Uh, People used to study Larry King's interviewing style. Uh, Jesse. And now he's just a dolt. <laughs> Tell us about Plum Island. Is it near Peach Peninsula? Comment. How's me to do that? Where is Plum Island? Plum Island is located right on the end of Long Island, and the unique thing about it is, Larry, it's a biological testing area that was created by a guy named Eric Traub, who was a Nazi right under Himmler and the SS. Oh, sorry. And his specialty was creating biological warfare using wood ticks and mosquitoes. And that's the big conspiracy here, because Lyme disease, the first recorded case, was in Lyme, Connecticut, which is right across the water from Plum Island. And, and imagine this, they're doing this type of research there this type of danger and they're 80 miles from boston and 75 miles from downtown new york the most populate populated area in our country larry hmm. wow <laughs> larry's just like hmm. Hmm. wow wow by the way it's the amazing by the way what a coincidence that lyme disease started in lyme, lyme. connecticut <laughs> isn't that a coincidence but um push that's weird when that happens. <laughs> By the way, online feed, fuck it up again for the boys down the hall. Of course it is. Of course it is. Well, they asked me, well, let us know when it's happening so we can figure this out. It's happening right the F now. It's a uh, 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 chemical, uh, biological weapons. A guy that was a Nazi actually started the... Uh, by the way... We brought over fucking Nazis after the war because they were brilliant fucking engineers and uh, uh, brilliant minds. Scientists. They were great scientists. They all came over here. We wouldn't have a fucking space program uh, if it wasn't for the German scientists that were brought over. I like your thought, but you said, by the way, wrong. Uh, by the way. 
You, hey, you got it. Uh, <laughs> yes, Jesse von Braun. On. Von Braun was a, 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 a German scientist. Yeah. And Werner von Braun. All right, Jesse, shut up. Fix your fucking radio, man. People are getting mad. Man! Right in the middle of you talking about that guy getting you, you know, cutting you off. It, it yeah. went to something else. See? It's a conspiracy. Yeah, they don't want you to hear the good stuff. Larry. Here's Jesse talking about the JFK conspiracy episode. Go ahead. Sorry, what were you saying? Well, I was just going to say they let me do JFK this year, Larry, and everybody asked me what I can bring new to the John F. Kennedy exactly. murder. How about an audio, visual, and written confession? That's what you'll hear this year. <laughs> Jesse, shut up. Wow. Wow. That's all, <laughs> and then that's all Larry's saying. Wow. Wow. <laughs> know, what's La know what Larry's doing right there? We all do it, too. When you're in the middle of a conversation and you realize, holy shit, I don't know what this person was just saying uh, to me. He's a nut. And they're looking at you for a reaction, wow. so you say something like, wow. Wow. That's and and wow. hope that covers it. Yeah. That's what Larry's doing there. Well, written a video confession on a show, right? They, this is something that couldn't be uncovered through decades, decades of uh, all kinds of um, conspiracy theories and everything. But it's going to be on Jesse's show. Wow. And who's confessing to what? Wow. I never said it was confessing to the JFK assassination. It's confessing to shoplifting baseball cards at the stationery. What? Wow. Wow. What? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Jesse wow. wants to abolish both political parties, and he's got cute nicknames for them, too. The last clip from last night for now. Uh. Uh, my view is we've got to get rid of both of these parties. I now stand for the abolishment of the Democrats and Republicans. Don't put them on ballots. Just put names on there. But I, would, I don't imagine you're in favor of the Tea Party. No, not really, because I think that they're just an extension of the Republicans. Again, Larry, I don't support the third party movement anymore, because to me, the system is so corrupt that any third party that's going to enter and be competitive within this system is going to have to corrupt itself. Well, it's already a two-headed monster. Why would we need a three-headed monster? Let's abolish political parties. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and John Adams all stood for that. So I got pretty good people standing behind me. I don't believe the Constitution mentions parties, does it? I don't believe it does either. I think this is something that came later, and I like to refer to them as the Democrips and the Rebloodlicans, Larry. Oh. And let's have no gangs in government. Let's start cleaning out our government and the gangs that run it. Oof. <laughs> Rebloodlicans? Democrips? Cute nicknames. I think a third party would just become part of a three-headed monster. And that's the fourth show in my series. There's supposed to be one in the East River. <laughs> I'll be going to New York looking for the three-headed monster, Larry. Who are you bringing wow. with you? Gold wow. dust? Gold Dust is coming with me. The Blue Meanie? Any, any wrestler that's still alive. <laughs> so look into that conspiracy, Jesse. <laughs> Why are the wrestlers dying at, a, yes. at, at an alarming rate? The, uh, well, George Michael We can learn from these people. He's cool. He, he is cool. cool. He's cool. He's cool. <laughs> he's blowing guys behind the shrubs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's got pine cone needles on his knees. <laughs> right. He's parking rides fucking in the in the bushes exactly. sucking cock. He's got Lyme disease on his ball bag. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's cool. Yeah, he's got to check for ticks on his taint. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Pulling him out. Right. Yeah. Because he needs the cock so bad. His favorite You're thing. Lyme, Connecticut, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Asshole. Yeah. Where is do, he? do you really think? <laughs> yes. Yes. I do. Well, if 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 that's the line you're believing, I'm not. I was on the inside. Just well, yeah. sure is cool. You nailed it. You got that nailed. Oh, it's just because uh, yeah, I've been you watching got that him. One He's so annoying. All right. What's going on in women's dressing rooms, by the way? They won't let me inside, and I'm a former governor. <laughs> you're not allowed in there. Why? Uh, yeah, we'll try to get in.
What? <laughs> what? He's trying to get to Plum Island. You're not allowed there. Are you running out? Is he running out of conspiracies? He's so running out. If he's doing the Kennedy thing, stop it. Is he doing Kennedy finally? Yes. Oh, you didn't hear the clip? No. Oh, he's got For fucking... Jimmy. Oh, forget oh, about it. it. We'll get back Way to Jack Tober in a he, second. Oh, yeah. He was on Larry King last night. I don't know Hold enough to now. argue certain... Hold like on. I can't argue... Like, I'm, I'm still... Like reading about, but guy, like a guy like Bugliosi, yeah, who wrote that book w would maul him in a debate. If you think so, did he ever serve in the service? He would maul him. No, thank you, thank you for your service, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Fuck Go ahead. Yeah, what were you saying? Oh, I was just going to say they let me do JFK this year, Larry, and everybody asked me what I can bring new to the John F. Kennedy murder. How about an audio-visual and written confession? That's what you'll hear this year. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Larry's answer is great. Wow. You know, he, wow. he thanked me for my service. That's, that's the way a real patriot does things. You tease it on a television show on cable yeah. when you've solved the murder of a president. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, the way you handle it. it. You, and you got the world watching. Yeah. You, you, Unlike his TV show. Audio, TV. visual, and written confession. What a, what a great point. Tell the world right there. Yeah, right there. Way right bigger there than there. your dumb it, show. It's not about the ratings. It's about solving the murder that you feel was unsolved. You won't believe what you don't know that I told you that you might know. What's the line? <laughs> We're a little scared today because we got UFOs over New York City. They're hovering right now as we speak, Anthony. Keep laughing. I don't know what they want, but Just they're hovering. Keep, keep laughing. I read the, uh, someone said they were mylar balloons. <laughs> well, you, you take that tack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with my gut feeling being an ex-governor and Navy SEAL. I know they're flying saucers sent by, uh, the government's space agency. Did you get on top of a building to get a closer look? Yes, I looked. You did. Actually, I, I get my <laughs> team together. We're flying to New York. Who's part of your team this time? I don't know. A black chick and some fag. <laughs> 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 Were you doing that all night? Uh, all night. Where you? I was going between him and Ira. I was having conversations with myself all alone in my living room. Well, you should have Ira <laughs> team up with Jesse. That would be a good <laughs> conspiracy <laughs> team. Get away, you Jew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got some UFOs over New York City. People UFOs. are losing their minds. Did it make the paper? Oh, yeah, it did. Is it front page? It uh, No. It's in there a few pages. It's one of those things that looks like they shoved in at the last minute. Right. It looks like those Mylar balloons <laughs> that they let go of, you know, during weddings and parties and shit like that. Yeah. Anniversaries. And what what the, the fuck ever. The light was hitting it just right or something? When the sunlight hits a Mylar balloon, it, it, even if it's just the size of the ones you buy at the stationery store, right. you see those fucking things miles away. So that's all it is? It's crazy. That's I'm my guess. I'm not saying they're flying saucers. There were a few of them. And there were a couple that were bundled together. If you let go of a bunch of balloons, some of them stay together, some of them go apart. I saw I saw balloons that were musical notes the other day. Mm -hmm. It was like, I just look up and these uh, black musical notes were like floating in the sky. It's like, nice. oh, that's kind of cool. Very nice. I don't know what it was for or anything, but I, I was like, wow, that's a unique balloon. I've never seen that before. Yeah. And people let go of fucking balloons. Relax. No, that looks Nothing like, happened. That looks like UFOs. Well, I believed you until I saw the pictures. That's UFOs, my friend. They're finally here. There was yeah. one picture of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're here. Over Midtown, it didn't look like balloons. It looked like a craft. No. But again, yeah. it might have just been that one angle. That I one think photo. it's one angle. And then there was the spacemen. Should they have been on the balloons? Have you ever seen the <laughs> documentary Independence Day? <laughs> <laughs> well, you laugh. That is actual fact. It happened. I was a former governor. I know. What about the Navy SEAL Shut thing? Shut up, Jimmy. Thank you for your service. <laughs> what about the Navy Don't SEAL we? thing? I was a Navy SEAL. Yeah, but this is in the air. I was privy this is to in that. The air. I tried to swim up to them. It's very hard. Even though air is a fluid, it's hard to swim in it. <laughs> it's an ass. Wouldn't the Air Force check it out? And maybe they did. And it, uh, yeah, yeah, unless they're in on it. They probably, Hello? Jesse, they checked it out. 
The Air Force checked it out. You're you're gonna buy the government line on this one? <laughs> I sure What's am. wrong with you? I sure am. Balloons? What's more plausible? That someone let go some mylar balloons that flittered in the sun? Or we're being invaded by UFOs? What's more feasible to you? I know it is to me. I was on the inside. I was a fighter, a former governor, a Navy SEAL, <laughs> and a balloon expert for about three months. What do you mean a balloon expert? I filled him with helium. Yeah? Yeah, wrestling was a little slow. <laughs> Vince McMahon set me off for a while. <laughs> but I, I believe my newspapers. It says Manhattan spark UFO frenzy. Exactly. You believe the, th the newspapers? Well, Come on now. Did you serve in the service? Uh, no. Then you don't know about the newspapers. Yeah, I just confused you. End of story. Just completely blew apart your argument, didn't I? No, I blew apart yours. I, I agree well, with you. Well, you could say that, but I'm bigger and can beat you up, I, so <laughs> I win. You are a bully. Thanks, tough guy. <laughs> You're a cyber bully. <laughs> so why don't you shut up, Jimmy? I don't want to get into it again with you. Make me look stupid again. <laughs> <laughs> I agreed with you. I said Manhattan spark UFO frenzy. I'm saying though they are UFOs. Tuh, well, I've got, they're balloons, dummy. Oh, what? <laughs> you say they're UFOs. I say they're balloons. So your whole thing is you, you don't want to say wanna... they're balloons. I say they're UFOs. Oh, so your thing is you don't want to agree with anyone ever. It's the only way my show continues. <laughs> I see if I disagree with the logical. <laughs> Or everyone else. So as soon as you agree with somebody, then your show is Shows over. off the air. God, exactly. So, they are our flying cars. So are they UFOs or not? Exactly. Are they? Uh, yes. I say yes, then. No, balloons. Then I say no. UFOs. <laughs> Who's on first? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Who was on second, though? It was a conspiracy <laughs> by the little fat man with the dead kid in the pool. Who's working with you these days? The Blue Meanie? Uh, who do you got? Gold Dust? Uh, Ivan, actually, Ivan I, Putzky? Uh, uh, Who's out of work that you're. Uh, I actually hiring? like the Ultimate Warrior. The Ultimate Warrior's on He's your team? the only one that makes any sense. Warrior says. Warrior! <laughs> <laughs> And he's a UFO expert, or a balloon expert, <laughs> depending on how you're looking at this. Maybe the warrior l let these balloons loose over Manhattan. Former governor, and they won't let me in. What's I don't understand. I tried to get into the, the core of a nuclear power plant. They wouldn't let me. I'm a former governor. Why won't they let you into these places? Something about immense doses of radiation. I said, I can't lose any more hair. <laughs> <laughs> they were just trying to protect you, sir. No, that, uh, if, that's <laughs> what, if that's what you want to believe. That's what they were doing. To protect me from what? Radiation. No, yes. there's no radiation. They're having secret meetings in there. Politicians. I was on the inside. I was a governor, a fighter. I was, I was, what else was I? A Navy SEAL. A Navy SEAL, a balloon blower upper, and a nuclear engineer. <laughs> <laughs> but I always wanted to be a beat cop. Really? Why? Yes. Well, I was lost one day, and they gave me an ice cream cone and a hat turned sideways. <laughs> and you never forgot that? It was a long time ago. I looked adorable. <laughs> it was like I, like our gang. Sitting on a stoop somewhere, all scared. Who you calling a stoop? <laughs> 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 He's so fucked up. Stupid Jesse. I can't get enough of him. Who and did, I haven't who, put the DVD away of his first show of this uh, coming up season. Yeah. So it's sitting on my uh, uh, one of the tables in my living room. Yeah. And every time I pass by him, I just look right at the picture. and it, No one's in my house. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a lunatic. I look right at it and go, mind control. <laughs> 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 Fucking crazy. He's got you in your own house. He's got me. He's controlling your mind. <laughs> <laughs> who nailed it yesterday? He's on Larry King. He's pretty much solved the JFK thing, but he decided not to tell the He's world. He's going to wait. On CNN. He's going to wait for his dumb show. I mentioned that cleverly. Jimmy, you mentioned yes. it. A lot less people will watch it, watch it on True TV. He's going to wait. I mean, I'm going to wait. What a dummy, right? I was on the Warren Commission. <laughs> and a Navy SEAL and a balloon blower upper and I wore feather boas. Which makes me an expert in the chicken industry or something. <laughs> With uh, my riffraff hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> riff I watched that clip recently. Holy fuck.
unbelievable. It was the way hot under he's the looking and sh- his head shaking. Was he in here yesterday? Uh, yeah, he was in the building. The fuck, I did man? the Howard Stern show. What, is Howard kissing his ass? No. How does Howard handle him? Howard likes him. I think he well, just handles we, him like we like him, but we, we like a goof. He doesn't really like uh, go back and forth with him too much. We he like, gets a little goofy with him more than serious. Yeah, because you can't be serious with the guy. You can't be taking his angle on this crap. <laughs> he kind of just lets Jesse talk. He goes way too far with his yeah. with his theories and conspiracies. I don't have time to bleed. Yeah, but as soon as I saw the UFOs over Manhattan, I'm like, oh boy, here comes Jesse. Here comes Jesse Ventura. There were, there were balloons. What are you talking about? I mean, yeah, that's what I say. They were balloons. We ought to look into these UFOs. So you think they're UFOs? Then I think they're UFOs. Balloons. <laughs> UFOs. <laughs> we can get to 10 o'clock doing this. <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> it's a conspiracy from the show. <laughs> Striker's on the phone for Jesse Ventura. Striker. Yeah, hey, good morning, boys. Hey, uh, Monday, Anthony, you brought up about the uh, uh, hidden compound. Under uh, Stryker, what's wrong with you? Anthony did not bring up anything on Monday's show. Jesse Ventura did. I'm sorry. He, he mentioned Jesse Ventura bringing it up. I apologize. All right, you just go along with the bit, would you? Yeah, Stryker, how are you listening? <laughs> what do you want to say to Jesse Ventura? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Jesse. Like, also, uh, Stryker wants to do a real fucking <laughs> news story yeah. on the underground city in Denver. Who gives a fuck? We could care less. I know it's there. I've seen it with my own eyes. Not really. But I've heard from people that have seen it from other people's cousins, uncles. The same well, people. Hey, shut up. It's the same people that talked to the person that had their kidney removed in a hotel room and was left with a note in a tub full of ice. It happened. I know the person. I was at the wedding when they turned the plates over and had pictures of the best man having sex with the groom or bride. Why is that a conspiracy, Jesse? Uh, well, you talk about it. Why? Why? Because Why is that a conspiracy? People just, did think it didn't happen. That's just someone with a grudge. People think it didn't happen, but we all know it did. How can you prove it? Do you think it happened? How can you prove it? Do you think it happened? No. Then it happened. Well, maybe it did happen then. Never happened. <laughs> Gotta keep my show on the air. <laughs> All right, Stryker, your phone call was a bust because you didn't want to go with the Jesse Ventura thing. Stryker, I don't even know her. How <laughs> funny, too. He basically wanted to prove that there's no underground city in Denver. I, I think we all know that. I think, I think it has something it to do out. with the fucking Denver airport. Yeah. What is it? Is the, is that the uh, largest airport in the country now? I don't know if it's the largest one. It's, it's up there, right? It's new. It's Looks the cool when you come in. Looks now, like uh, little snow caps. Escape from Plum Island, Gennaro saying. Ah, could have happened. <laughs> Wait, he actually works at Plum Island? No. Uh, Gennaro. Works. Yes, sir. What's up, sir? You work at Plum Island? Yes, I do. Nice. Yeah, what do you do? Uh, federal police officer. Oh, okay. So you keep people like Jesse Ventura off your fucking island. Um, absolutely. Actually, I was not there that day. Oh. Um, but I'll get to I'll get to why I wasn't even there in a minute. Um, I'm glad you put me on because I really last night I'm watching TV and I see his uh, I guess trailer for this and such a badass he is. Um, I'm going to expose the truth and uh, ugh, it's pretty fucking disgusting this guy um well obviously just to help people along a little bit uh second season of conspiracy with jesse ventura first show uh first show of the second season right yeah yeah and uh, yeah it's a it's a joke show it really is you know not, and uh he wanted to expose what's going on in plum island which yeah, is a little island yeah. at at the end of long island that no one's allowed to go to because they're experimenting on animals and shit and, what they say, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what I, they do. I there. just wanna, no one knows what they do there. I just want to pull a tentative shenanigans. Okay, right now on on Gennaro. Oh, really? But, yeah, it's tentative. I could be wrong, we're, we're, but I wanted to talk a little more. Are we heading toward a fruncus? It could. I don't know what it could Absolutely be. Absolutely not. Come on. <laughs> Come all on. All right. What, what, are you, what are your shenanigans? I'll, I'll help you out. No, I don't know. I just want to know, like, all right, you called. Did you say Jesse's but bullshit? Yeah, we we know that is, and stuff. So yeah. what? Why weren't you there? Um, because it wasn't actually my tour. Uh, it wasn't my tour to do the duty. I work uh, Fridays and, and Saturdays out there because I'm one of the... Uh, All right, so it wasn't guys. your day when Jesse Ventura was... Let, let's cut to the chase. Yeah. we got lots okay, to do so, today. we got the What so, the Hell Is That show that we're uh, prepping for. Yeah. He, uh, he shows up uh, 
when you, when you get there, I'm sure, I don't know if you guys have ever been to the Orient Point Ferry. It's actually right next to the ferry that you take over to Palm Island. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's fenced off the demarcation that clearly, uh, you know, shows that it's U.S. property. Uh-huh. And uh, he was asking through the gate if he could come in ever so kindly uh, because he uh, was saying he was doing a documentary, uh, but everybody already knew he was coming, so they immediately shot him down. Uh-huh. And uh, after, he was very, very, very polite. Um, so what he does is he then tries to charter a boat out of Orient Point somewhere to to get over to the island. Yeah. Nobody on Orient Point wanted to even help him because uh, oh, the whole North Fork East End there, there's a lot of people that work out on that island that live out there, so no one's going to help this guy out. Yeah, they had a list of uh, all the co- uh, companies, charter boats that wouldn't take him to, Ori- uh, to or- of Plum Island. They wouldn't. But it's like, of course they're not going to. Why would they want to violate a-, a law? Right. They don't want to be in trouble with the feds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cause they'll be Jesse. immediately uh, blackballed from their uh, recommended tourist guide list out there. Right, so. so Jesse trying to get to Plum Island. We get it. So he actually ended up going out to Montauk and got a boat out there. And uh, he was told immediately that if he stepped foot on the on the, on the island, uh, that, that he would be arrested. But I'm a former yeah. governor, a yeah. fighter, a Navy SEAL. Nobody, right. really, nobody really gave a shit. Um, <laughs> no one he, ever does. I, I actually called that morning because I'd known about it because I, I worked primarily out of Central Iceland. And Gennaro, I that Gennaro, and seriously, it's way too early for this. I, I got to jump lone, in. He's lonely out on that island. Open. You got to You got to stay focused, and we got to move. Let, we got to move. Is there a? Is there an end to this story? Yeah, we get it. Like he, Jesse had a tough time even getting someone to get him close to Plum yeah. Island. So that's on the documentary. Yeah, so. we we know all that. So he got a boat out of Montauk. Then what happened? And then he was too scared to come anywhere close to the island. He's a lying piece of shit, and he's a pussy. Really. Okay, so, th- yeah, the point being, you guys obviously would have arrested him if he stepped uh, foot on Plum Island, because you don't want to deal with Jesse or anybody yeah. else for that matter. But no. the fact also is that Jesse didn't even uh, push it, really. He just kind of hung out in the water uh, far enough away where no one was going to mess with him. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. That, that was the whole point of the story, that he's a, he's a vagina. Okay, yeah, because if Jesse really gave a shit about his conspiracies and getting shit done... He would have uh, pushed the the boat driver or whatever to get him as close to Plum Island as possible uh, to have some kind of interaction with the feds. Yeah, but nothing. But Look, instead, the Coast Guard is shadowing us. The Coast Guard. He had like a, t- a thousand time telephoto lens on a little dinghy so, from the Coast Guard. As far as as far as the whole testing and stuff that goes on out there, I don't know because I don't get out of the car. Could you I, I could you get out of the car one day, walk in, and just snort anthrax like it's coke? <laughs> thank you, what Gennaro. All right, Gennaro. Thank exactly. you. What was that? <laughs> thank you. I'm gonna fruncus you. Nothing. Shut up. You heard no. me. He's a fed. Be nice to him. <laughs> These guys can get things done. Thanks, Gennaro. <laughs> Yeah, but you saw that episode, and so Jesse's yeah. in the water, far away from Plum Island, and far away from the Coast Guard, the Coast Guard I would assume. No one was because, hassling because him. Because he, he wasn't a threat at all to anybody. Yeah. And the, uh, the, the, I bet yeah. you just weekend boaters are more than a, uh, more of a threat than Jesse was. And the, uh, the uh, narrator was going, coming up, Jesse Ventura, uh, or the governor, the governor goes Navy SEAL on Plum Island. And they just show him on the boat. Mm-hmm. Like, because he's on the water, he's going Navy SEAL. Right. And it was nothing. It was him on a boat going, yeah, well, we're, we have to turn around. What, what, if he was going Navy SEAL, wouldn't there be footage of him coming out of the water near the shore with a knife in his mouth? Yeah, knife in his mouth, <laughs> fucking with his snorkel. Frog, his frog suit on. Frog, I brought my Vietnam frogman suit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going Navy SEAL on Plum Island. That's Navy SEAL. You got you got the dark fucking uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You I, got the I don't want to call him makeup. Face but paint the on face and paint. shit. You got the knife in your teeth. Yeah, yeah. You come up slow from the water. You got some kind of Bond girl next to you. She's got her frog suit on. I realized then that they had taken me to Nantucket, so I relaxed for a while. <laughs> he is a douche. Well, I, I, I took that phone call because I wanted to lead to the brand new bill. Of course. Because, you know, we're learning stuff from Jocktober, and Sam taught us yesterday that yeah. if you're doing radio, you got to bring up stuff, not that you care about yeah. that subject at hand, but you bring up stuff to get to a bit. To get to a bit. To get to a prep burger bit. A prep burger. But let me tell you, uh, let me tell <laughs> everyone out there, this is not a prep burger bit. I actually stayed uh, t- 10 minutes late yesterday. Yeah. To voice something. <laughs> oh, my God. So Jesse Ventura working. is working on another conspiracy theory. Yeah. 
And uh, here it is. Mm. He sees the lies. The gay elite, they're pushing their agenda on you, and you don't even know it. The secrets. Pro-homo propaganda is being rammed down your throat. The cover-ups. They're using the media against us. On the next Conspiracy Theory, Jesse Ventura exposes it all. What's really going on with that Chilean mine? Heartwarming story of surrender. Survival or a two and a half month man on man love a thon constructed entirely by queer controlled global media. You didn't have to be an expert watching that video to realize how hot those Chilean miners were, all of them absolutely covered in sweat. How aggressive they would like to drill, how much they would like to drill. In some ways, those miners were having moments where they were enjoying each other's company. They had to curve the shaft so it would pass through this, this new, what they call virgin rock. Yeah, the gay elite want you prancing around like a bunch of sissies and sucking each other's cocks. If you can't measure, you can't manage it. Remarkable pictures there uh, on his knees. You know, what goes in comes out. That square hole, and it is dark. It is ominous. Uh, it is almost the path to hell, and these men are coming up from that path. You won't believe what you don't know. There you go. I My, like mind that. control. I uh, like it's, that. it's all a big conspiracy. Is it mind control or mind? Mind uh, control. Ah. <laughs> mind, mind control. Ah, you won't believe what you don't know. <laughs> It's Ira. She says she became so upset because she claims they are the real owners of the house and the incident is all part of a larger conspiracy. I genuinely feel like these people are trying to kill us. Who? And how the Hollywood insiders, and, Opie. And, and, and how can they say it's their house? Was it their There's house? There's a plot to kill the Quades. I've seen it before. I'm driving. Let's talk to the Quades. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay, what have you got on the Quades? Well, Governor, I see that there's some people in Hollywood that want them dead. Ah, proof positive right there. <laughs> the Negro woman said it. <laughs> oh, he's such a tool. I was watching his special on uh, or special his show on Area 51. Ooh, sure, it was great. Over the weekend. Oh, just horrible. I went to Area 50 and made a left. <laughs> and there it was. Did he say that? They guided me to Area 52 thinking I couldn't count. <laughs> they were right. I got up to Area 70 before I said, oops. <laughs> <laughs> it was Derby proof. Nothing again. They kept going. Um, that, uh, before commercials, they're like, and when we return, Jesse, the governor, goes head to head with the security at Area oh, 51. Really? And then they kept teasing it. And Jesse faces down the gun barrel of security at the border of Area 51. And then they got there. They finally get it. They finally get to the point, and, and Jesse's like, if I step over this imaginary line, they could shoot a governor? No. And then he goes, well, we decided it was too much of a chance and turned around. They were teasing how he faced down the guns the whole time. Ah, what an asshole. Yuck. So they're, they're, you're, they're going to shoot a former governor? That's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, God. What, what, what happens at I'm a former one? moron, a governor. Oh, wait, I got it backwards. I'm a moron, <laughs> a fighter, a Navy SEAL, <laughs> even though they weren't called that when I was in. Yes, with a UDT, underwater UDT, demolition. UDT, underwater demolition, or in G.I. Joe vernacular, it was a frogman. <laughs> <laughs> what an ass. Hmm. Uh, anyway, I was watching what, that. What happens at Area 51 now? You're just not allowed in that area? Of course, and it's been that way for years. They built hmm. classified military weaponry it uh, a lot of it does go under congress's uh, uh feet they, they 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 don't know about a lot of these things they're covert projects you can't if if anything's been proven congress cannot keep fucking secrets when you're trying to build something right. you have to give government certain latitude as far as secrecy goes and when it comes to national security and weaponry especially what's come out of uh groom lake uh, area 51 skunk works it's some of the best, most amazing machines ever built. 
on the face of this earth. And the only reason it was able to, uh, they were able to do that is because it wasn't funded by Congress and there wasn't this pork barrel shit and arguing and bullshit. It's the CIA, the military saying, we need this, build it. Do you think if Congress had to step in and fucking have all of them had to say had to say in the Manhattan Project, we ever would have had an atomic bomb? Of course not. Fuck no. And it's the same thing that's been going on uh, at Area 51 for years. There's no a of fucking flying saucers. There's no bullshit. It's heavy security because it's a private installation that uh, builds uh, classified weapons. Shut up, Jesse. You didn't prove shit. I proved what what's there, <laughs> little green men? He actually said little green men. Shut up. Go back to Mexico, you fucking unpatriotic cock. He's just a boob. He is a boob. That's kinda cliche, huh? Yeah. Is that I the know. worst cliche ever? Dummy. Hey, Troy likes that show? <laughs> Anth is on the area fifty one payroll. <laughs> Wait, Troy likes conspiracy with uh with Ventura? Uh, Does he like I, it? I, I like received, I like it. I received a communication that Troy disagreed with Anthony and that he well, thought bring it was him really in. good. Oh, uh, God. And, and Jesse uh, and one of his cronies faced the people that were coming off the plane. Now, the plane leaves Vegas. It's about a 90-minute 90, 90, uh, flight. Not uh, No, it's like 100 and some odd miles. I'm not even sure. Are you? It, it, it's close enough to Vegas. Yeah. They get on this plane. It's workers. And it's like, what's with the secret uh, Area 51 airline that takes the employees into Area 51? It's like, yeah. They don't want to commute from Vegas to Area 51 <laughs> through an uh, open desert. So the fucking government supplies them with transportation. It's not some big... Ooh, they're not on there fucking uh, talking. They're probably talking about what you got for lunch, there, Pete. Maybe they're bringing in <laughs> the aliens that way. Yes, the aliens. Uh, why, why are you dressed like that? We, we do morning radio. <laughs> it's freezing back there. I'm freezing my ass. You don't like that he's dressed like Fonzie's nephew Spike. <laughs> you got a, like a, a leather jacket on. Like you? Did yeah. you come from a bar or something? No, this is a jacket I this wear. This is how you dress in the morning. Well, this is the jacket I wear. In. It seems exhausting. It's like a leather it's just a jacket. blazer or something. Oh, yeah. It does. Brown, it's like brown leather jacket. Uh, What's nothing wrong with it? No, it looks heck yeah. Thanks, man. It's cool, Sam. From coming from someone wearing military garb, yeah, how he's just like Schwarzenegger in the first <laughs> Terminator. You got like a you got like a black like uh, dress up shirt you'd wear out, yeah, and then like, a leather jacket over it. He looks like Tyler Durden. What? The, yeah, you oh, got a little Tyler shit, Durden. That's in good. You. What's wrong with wearing a button up shirt? Everything. I don't know. Look how we dress. Just yeah, just but fit it's, in. It's, well, yeah. it's different. <laughs> <laughs> Troy, you could just fucking lay in and say, hey. At least one person wants to look good here in the morning. Well, you know, I mean, it's nothing wrong with taking a little pride in your appearance. You know? <laughs> he looks like Tyler Durden. Look, he's wearing yeah. Tyler Durden's fucking <laughs> <I> shit. Mean, <laughs> that's how you came to work. Oh, that's perfect. Good call. That's yeah, how you I came mean, to work. Damn. I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, uh, yeah but all right, whatever. It's fine. Whatever. I go the opposite. Well, I, I, I like to smelly fucking sweatpants. Half the I, well, time. I'd like to look like Tyler Durden too, but at fucking four fifteen in the morning, right. I don't give a fuck. Right, right, right. I'm not, I'm, not doing, night. I'm not blow drying my hair and trying to find out what leather looks best with this shirt. But it's not a conscious decision. It's not like oh, I gotta look fucking awesome. It's just yeah, it's this is the jacket that I wear and I put it on. I leave. Troy doesn't. He just doesn't. He doesn't. He sleepwalks and blow dries his hair at the same time when he's leaving. He doesn't even realize it. No, I just don't wash my hair. That's the way it was from yesterday. You don't have greasy hair? No. I can't go one day without washing my stupid hair. Gets yeah. all greasy and shit. I just get up and just go. Fuck yeah. it. Yeah. Get up and go. Right, right on, on, man. Uh, you like conspiracy with Jesse Ventura? Well, I mean, it's, it's bad acting. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I kind of get off on some of the conspiracy shit. It's, you know? You don't see every single episode as loaded with just bullshit, teases for things that never materialize, uncredible witnesses that he digs up out of nowhere that if you Google their names, which I do, I Google their names, I see what their background is, they all are not involved with anything having to do with the subject matter. And they don't ever seem real. They seem uh, like they're acting. They yeah, seem they're pro badly. professional speakers. You know what I mean? They're they terrible. speak very clearly. Why is Sam making a commotion? Troy's bullshitting because he's in the studio with you guys. No, I just said I liked it. That's why I came in no, here. No, Troy oh, We loves... were able to turn you that quickly? <laughs> no, no, no. no. Yeah, 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 it yeah. must be some kind of mind control. <laughs> no, You've mind controlled Troy. We're finding more uh, <laughs> pictures of Tyler Durden for you, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. That's how you come to work. You come to work like Tyler Durden. It's great. Yeah, I, I'm, not, to pick I'm not offended by that in the least. You trying to pick up chicks here or what? 
uh, you always got to be ready. You know what I mean? Troy uh, didn't shower because he was up all night making soap. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, what? He's a big Troy fan of the show. He loves the show. And, now he's, and he completely buys everything. You buy no, 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 no,
what people tell me as this is what's happened. You apparently, I just naturally truthers, like question. structural engineers and popular yeah. mechanics. But like I said, I, I haven't done the research, so I, I don't know. I'm not here. But to they're <laughs> they're a bunch of different people. It's not like you're listening to the government officials have told you this. It's like. Engineers, the the average Joe uh, uh, that w that works in a, a fucking welding shop knows the principles and and, and um, uh, makeup of of steel and and temperatures and there's just it's been a, a cross section of people that have said this is why these buildings fell. The only people that refute it are people that have nothing. There is no solid proof. It's these blurry pictures of something that they say, or, wow, this isn't shaped like an airplane at the Pentagon, because it hit at a fucking 45-degree angle uh, at a high rate of speed. Uh, they, they take pictures of holes that were punched in the wall by firemen and say, why is this hole so small? It was a missile. Like, it's all just bullshit on one side, and then facts that are backed up by multiple sources on the other side. I'd rather go with the, the factual part than the made-up part. Right. That's all. No, no, I was just saying he has questions, though. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't oh, think yeah. there's anything wrong with questioning it. And like I said, I haven't done the research. I've looked at both yeah, but, sides. But would, you, would it be fair to say that, that you prefer to not do the research? All I'm saying is I don't know. Are you I saying really this don't is know. part of Project Mayhem? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, Tyler I think it's part of Project Man. You know, I think I did see a smiley face in WTC7. I, I saw that right, for a split uh, second. Right before it went I down. saw a yellow smiley face. Right, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't go down to uh, <laughs> Ground Zero and, and pick it and, and say all this bullshit. It's just like, I don't think there's it. anything wrong ground with questioning. Zero. I went to what Ground happened? One. <laughs> So. <laughs> right next door. I got a good look, though. And, and I enjoy the documentaries. I enjoy it. I'm fascinated by all of it, really. And and I, I enjoy the uh, the conspiracy parts of it. I'm I'm not saying that they're true you know or what? they're not. If you look at it at, at entertainment value and think, wow, it would be fun to think something like that's going on. That's one thing. But Jesse sending his team <laughs> out, which by the way is a team of horrific actors. Oh, they're horrible. They know nothing. And the witnesses he gets, the, it was embarrassing when that black chick knocked on the van door yeah. and, and it opens up and goes, come in. It sounded like fucking Hannibal Lecter, this mysterious guy in a white van in the middle of the desert, is giving her information on who to talk to. And it's like, I'm here alone, and I'm scared to knock on the door. Alone? You got a camera crew, and a, guy, a fucking boom mic operator, and a gaffer, and yeah. probably a big fucking bruiser guy mm -hmm. that carries this shit. Mm -hmm. Shut up! Troy doesn't watch for fun, though. He watches because he thinks that's closer to getting to the bottom yeah. of things than the official story. Yeah. That's true. And why is Jesse kind of a pussy? Why didn't he walk over the line? Yeah. To, to show what happens if you it walk over the line. It wasn't worth it. Send worth the cameraman over. I would have had to walk another 20 miles. But he's, I'm not doing it. I'm driving. He's kind of like Fonzie, though. He never gets into the actual action. It's, it, he is exactly like Fonzie. We bring up the Fonzie thing all hey. the time, but... Jesse's kind of Fonzie. <laughs> Fonzie never would step over the line either. <laughs> hey, same guy. Look at all the shit going on around WTC7. <laughs> Look at all the shit <laughs> going on giant around buildings it. It's surrounded of it. by collapse of buildings and fire. Plus, I don't think that uh, you know, it fucked up the foundation. Couldn't a have been bit. damaged? No. There's just an entire <laughs> city falling around it. <laughs> Looks like they got to the bottom of that myth. <laughs> <laughs> One picture proves, uh, wow. <laughs> proves a lot there, too. I love the no. people that go, and it wasn't even damaged by the buildings <laughs> falling. It's like in the epicenter of the buildings falling. It was just a matter of Holy time. Shit. How, did, you, how, did not, how did it not fall down right away? Yeah, it's a miracle That's it didn't what was fall your question. immediately. That's what I'm looking well, I mean, into. I guess, I guess what they say is it fell at free fall speed. That's what the... Oh, the free fall speed oh, uh, argument's the, correct. Wait, they didn't say argument. that? That's yeah. not what they said, Danny? Yeah. Not, I'd like to take a uh, truth and go, throw him off a building and see how fast he falls and then measure it against WTC7. I love, I love how people go all the time. They go, they go, oh, did you see it come down? It looked just like a controlled demolition. Yeah. And it's like, well, have you ever seen a building come down that wasn't a controlled demolition? How do you know what it looks like to compare it to? Yeah. But if it was structural good. damage, you would think that it wouldn't come down like a... Like a building falling like down? fall into Why? its footprint. That's it what they're like saying. like a building falling down to me. Whoa. Ooh, well, I, it's a very challenging I'm observation, just people, Randall. People like to—it's—it's it's just one of a lot of things. It's one of those key phrases that that conspiracy theorists about 9/11 say because yeah. they've heard it said or they've read it in in text. But in actuality and in practice, sure, did it look like that? Perhaps. 
Have you ever seen a building come down that wasn't part of a of a controlled demo Once to compare it to? Starts it's falling. It's, it's just, just gonna it's fall just a building straight. falling down. Right. So you have nothing yeah. to compare it My to. My question is really simple. If if you're going to take out the twin towers, why would you have to also take out Building Seven? Well, I mean, that's what, what, the CIA what, because was. there was a uh, uh, what's the, a, a file I mean, folder what, in there. Yes. The, I can tell you what they're, they they yeah, say. What's the theory there? Because well, it doesn't make sense to me. Well, when, a lot of people say that the the operation had taken place there, and that was the building for. And I'll, again, I'm just saying what people are saying, and Danny. What? As, as Danny's know. like the building was freaking the out building over here, but I'm not freaking Whoa. out. I'm just I'm you countering just, you. It's that's just all. saying that that's where the CIA was, and that's where possibly the operation had been Wait, orchestrated. Let me so ask you a question: Why would the have CIA to destroy that building to that's make sure good, there's no that's evidence good to operate yeah. right next yeah, exactly, to the place right. you're blowing up? <laughs> and why blow up your own office? Who does that? <laughs> <laughs> who blows up the? Who allows their office to fall down? Get smart. And not knowing if all your paperwork, because if the building falls, your paperwork gets blown all over the. Yeah. <laughs> who, who does that? Your paperwork. <laughs> How do we cover up the crime? You're Knock the building down, let the fireman pick it up. <laughs> that makes no sense. You figure that building would be kept intact and they could guard the shit. Yeah. Get big safes. Right. You don't knock it down and let stuff fly all out. Why is he saying these things? Do it from somewhere far away. But what's wrong with questioning anything? Like, why do you have to be I'm always saying? Oh, why, 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 why would do you always have to believe what that tells no, you? No, 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 we do. not. You know, and, but, but, and, but, and, and, and by that, thing. he was pointing at... We did... Oh, well, oh some no, sorry. Okay, yeah, I was going to do a dumb joke, but he was, we, the TV he was playing, actually. We, we do question things. I do. And from what I've looked into, after questioning things, you get answers. <laughs> and the answers I, I got were all reasonable that th th terrorists, Muslim extremists, flew planes into buildings, and they collapsed. I hope you're it's right. So much. I, I really do. I hope you're right. I, I would say... <sighs> I'm 99.99, and then keep the nines going, infinity, yeah. uh, right, on this one. Nine repeating. Yes, 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 infinity. Because if the operation was that important, the CIA would never allow something like a flight not taking off on time, or uh, a passenger bringing down a plane like they did the third one. Or the fourth one. They would never leave that stuff to chance. Like everything went as planned. Like the CIA's operation <laughs> could be covered up if the two buildings collapse and then they demolish World Trade Center 7. Instead of A, just doing it from a different location. Mm -hmm. why, would they, why would they leave it to chance that one of the planes, say one of the planes didn't take off. Right. Mechanical difficulty, where there's a problem at the airport or fucking weather. Happens. Or, 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 or an engine light goes off and they got to turn around. Then they got a fucking 1,100 foot building filled with explosives. Now, how do you explain that? How <laughs> stupid does that look? Now they got to send people in to take them all out. Unions get paid. It's like, oh, it's an invisible plane. It doesn't make sense. Nobody who could pull off this genius plot would do it in that horseshit way. And they hit it with the planes and then waited a perfect amount of time where uh... people would have thought like that and let people get out and. Wait. Why not just go, wow, we fucked you. We got a bunch of people and blew up these buildings. <laughs> That's why I don't like conspiracy theorists in general, because they're so married to the idea of it. They're not being honest when they say they're looking for the truth. They'd rather make the truth their idea than uh, use the facts that they find to make well, the I don't truth. Think they ignore the facts. Uh, they, they do ignore the facts because I think if you if you start to pay attention to the facts and take and, and pay attention to common sense, then you you distance yourself from that kind of movement and now you can't be a part of it anymore. Yeah, yeah. So oh, it's yeah. this collective right, thing where right. you feel like you're a part of this thing. Yeah, man, so, I'm part of it. Right, right, though. Man. Right. And then when you when you lose that now you now you, you're out of the you're identity. So you'd thing. rather so you'd rather not do the research, and you'd rather not pay attention right. to the common sense facts because you want to stay a part of that crew. You don't want to be. Oh, you're you, right. No, you I, don't want to be like Edward Norton uh, in American History X when he goes back to the party after he was in prison. And I think after Alex Jones so was on, fun one with of the you Nazis, guys, and then what happened? One of you guys had said something about uh, you know nobody ever says when somebody proves when somebody says something. None of the conspiracy theorist guys ever go, oh, that's a really good point. They just don't. No, no, never. I talk to them. They always have point. an answer for it. And the answer is so vague and, and that's not why, backed up by facts. And that's why I have a hard time believing them as well. But all I'm no, saying is I enjoy well. both sides. I enjoy for, for just an entertainment value of no, what Alex no. Jones does or, or what some of these documentaries do. I enjoy the, the idea of... No. You know, so Sam it just sits back there going, "No." I, I don't know what you're no. Talking. So, 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 hold on, no. Sam. What is he trying to say? Yeah, exactly. Troy is the guy because 
you, he gave you the answers to the questions factually, and you responded by going, well, I hope that's the case. I, that I, is I, the I, vague I, conspiracy theorist the answer. No, no it, it's the truth. I would like to believe that that didn't happen. I would like to believe that our government <laughs> wouldn't do that to us. No, I would really man. like to believe that. You ever hear of the Gulf of Tonkin incident? <laughs> <laughs> but I yes. don't know. I don't know. So what, but let me ask you a question. Even though the military does black ops and all that, we got that. What guys are they getting to wire two 1,100-foot buildings that are keeping that? Abu Ghraib couldn't be kept a secret. Oh, yes. These dumb motherfuckers were texting photos of soldiers of the Iraqis in pyramids. Nothing is a secret They anymore. had it made and they blew it. They, nobody <laughs> they would have ever known. Right. They just had to shut their mouths and, and not text each and, other. And they How sent pictures and somebody it. ratted. Right. Someone would have been like, with a stick of dynamite. Look, Look. I'm in the World Trade Center putting it <laughs> in a beam. Who the fuck is hey, sitting on this? It's on Facebook. <laughs> Who's sitting hey. on this? How many notifications I got? <laughs> oh, Al-Qaeda <laughs> likes this. <laughs> <laughs> I think if that guy vomiting beer out of his nose <laughs> yeah. has been around since 1994 i think something probably would have surfaced by now yeah. yes. <laughs> or, or, or i love what i love when these fucking dumb motherfuckers use uh use la language they heard from uh, jfk oliver stones and they use the term oh. stand down just from jfk stand oliver stone. down norad was told to stand down were they yeah you they? dumb child mm. shut up they weren't Ugh. they weren't but it's false flag terrorism. Oh, How dare you, sir? Such idiocy. <laughs> and I always know when they're repeating facts, and not to get on JFK, but I always know when they're repeating Oliver Stone facts. Yeah. It's like, I know you saw the movie. <laughs> yeah. I know you <laughs> think the movie. I know you think it. Mr. X was one person, you <laughs> dumb motherfucker, <laughs> but he wasn't. Adult. All right. It just drives me nuts when you hear people just repeating things. Mm. And I was interested to know, and because uh, the Pentagon, look, they raised some interesting questions. I'm not saying he's wrong. But then after hearing the explanation and hearing conspiracy theorists, I, I just completely believe the real explanations because to me they were factual. And the conspiracy mm. theorists, and I listened to them. I, they came on this show because I remember, I remember bringing it up and saying, let's interview one of these guys. And I hated them so much because I was trying to be open-minded and go, well, maybe they have a point. But then when presented with a fact, I listened to how these little fucking baby boys acted. Yep. And they didn't act like me when I had a, a fact. You understand? Like, I really wanted to be open-minded about it. Your facts weren't facts. That was shit that was fed to you by the government. What right. they know, right. that's fact. True. And that, there's no telling them any difference. I simply, I really wasn't sure why the plane right. looked like that going um, to the Pentagon. So, I wanted to ask. And their explanation I just thought was childish. And I believe Because it's a missile. It but wasn't just, a plane. I just believed that people. That plane landed in Cleveland. <laughs> After, and then we were talking to them on the street, and the one little girl, God oh, bless yeah. her, needing to fit in, probably was molested soul. Oh, but saying hope. things, I, I said, what about the voice recordings? Yeah. Those were people using voice. It's like, you little child. Do you really think that their families are fooled? They're, they're what about the first and the last names being left on the answering machines? Yeah. Because they were leaving their last will. Yeah. They knew they were going to die, you dummy. You've never heard of uh, a voice synthesizer? Uh, well, You've I never heard of a voice like, synthesizer? How do you listen? Like, You've never heard of a phaser? And I guess it's just impossible to get cell service on the 90th floor of the World Trade Center. Yeah, like, yeah. I guess if I go up to the 90th floor, I can't get a cell signal. I would signal. only believe that if they all had iPhones. <laughs> then I would believe yes, the conspiracy. Then it, would, it would never happen. Yes, because we all know. But uh, a plane zooming through the building tops of Manhattan, I believe you could get a signal. Tell you the truth. Silly. I, I think he can get a signal. Oh, I just hated the conspiracy theory. Yeah, that's great. That's cool. Yeah, you yeah. know, debunk, debunking. But but every time th whoever puts you, this out, there's somebody that can so you contradict probably, it. You've probably never seen the History Channel special about the, the popular mechanics. I, 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 I'm I sure you've seen Loose Change about three or four times. I would right? love to watch it. Have I'd you love seen Loose Change? Anything. Uh, I saw the first version. Have I never you seen saw the second like Zeitgeist version. and all that shit? No, I don't even know what that is. Hmm. By the way, when Jesse was, by the way, Jesse, Loose when he was, change. When he was, when he was at Ground Zero, yeah, absolutely. Why, why did he not know this stuff when it happened? Why did he? By the way, Jesse says he never looks at computers. I don't own a computer. Yeah. Well, then how have you touch. watched all these documentaries? Somebody handed you a videotape. My or, crack team shows them to me in my conference room. That's very dark. But it's, it's a set. Didn't he come? What year? When did Jesse start talking about con the 9 11 conspiracy? When did this ex governor, ex Navy SEAL jump on the fucking college? When I was age offered mentality? money to talk about it. <laughs>
I want to know when he jumped on that bandwagon. Because he did not say it September no. 12, 2001. No. And he didn't say it all through 2001, I, I don't believe. He was on fucking, he was there. He went down to ground zero, and he didn't say it. Hey, uh, we got someone that wants to straighten your ass out, Anthony. Dave in Virginia. Uh, boy, okay. Dave. Dave. Straighten me out. Kill him. Let's go, Dave. Hey, go. Yeah. hey, how you doing? Hey, listen, I love you guys. Man, you guys had the expert on your show, and you didn't even ask him about it. Who? Listen, Jesse Ventura admitted that he's not the knowledge that you need to explain this to you. Okay. Okay? He says he is the person that gets on the media because he's accepted. All right. But Alex Jones, who you had on your show... Oh. If you would have asked him about this, he would have straightened you out. He is the fat man. Do you remember? Do you, hold on, hold on. I, I, Alex, I liked Alex. Well, let's book Alex Jones. Hold on. Do I liked Alex Jones? But, he would have gladly talked. Well, dude, relax. You're on the phone. We're talking to you. But, what was I talking to Alex Jones about? Where I was trying to. Alex Jones, look, he's a smart guy, but he's a performer as well. Mm -hmm. And when he was talking about certain things like. Alex uh, Jones is a patriot, man. Do you want to just keep babbling through what I'm trying to respond oh, I'm to you? I'm going to talk to you. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm not saying he's not a patriot. I didn't say he should be put in an internment camp. I am saying he's an entertainer. <laughs> that <was me. laughs> uh, what I'm saying is, I was trying to pin him down. He said that somebody offered him, I believe it was for the 9-11 stuff, they offered him a lot of money to come along. And again, I, I'm not trying to misquote the guy, but I was like, well, who did that? Why? And he wouldn't name the person. And I'm like, for somebody whose whole thing is to uncover conspiracies... One of those major guys came to him and asked him to come along, and he refused, and he won't name them out of some sense of honor, of not breaking trust. Yeah, of, it's please. like, what are you talking about? That's that backing up with facts. What's that? Why is that important? Somebody because who is backing up your sources. Because that's somebody who, if somebody who's in on the conspiracy or who knows about the conspiracy on that level and who wants you, even if it's not 9 11, if it's banking, and wants you to come along and you don't expose them. If you don't, then it's just you talking. So many of them and they're so rich. I could make shit up and say, yeah, it's a, a source I have that I can't reveal. And that makes it true? Listen, why don't, you get the, why don't you give him the benefit of the doubt and get Alex back on the show? We'll get him back on. We're we not... had Alex. What was the issue, Danny, that we were talking? Does anybody remember? We have to go oh, through well, the audio again. Because it's JFK. Twinkie filling. JFK. No, there was something yeah. else, though. There was something more. That, that was recent. Over the years, I said no. Where he Alex, said yes. uh, they said, Alex said somebody approached him about something, thinking that he wouldn't blab about it. And, I, and again, I don't want to misquote the guy. But, dude, when he wouldn't say who it was, this is a guy yeah. whose whole thing is uncovering conspiracies. And he refused to name who it was. And you're saying, why is that important? Come on, you know why that's important. But, Jimmy, I mean, there's so many other issues. I mean, what... Can you, dude, can you just admit See, to yourself and to me... That issue. Let's address the one issue. Can you not admit <clears throat> that that is somewhat suspect, that a guy whose job it is to uncover things says somebody big or important came to him Listen, and he won't name them? Alex has death threats on him continuously. You're not answering me. Why would, he, why would he want a death threat ex exa exalted on him? Again, so you're saying that he, he, he wouldn't be trying to expose all these things if death threats frightened him. Right, right. But his family? So he only exposes enough that the death, the people don't pull the trigger? What is this? His family's been threatened also. Why are you allowing your love of Alex? <laughs> that, Dude, why are you allowing the fact that you really like Alex to, in, to, to not allow you to answer this one question? I don't know why he wouldn't tell you. Okay? Doesn't that disturb you on some... some... Some kind of security purpose. No, but his answer was, <laughs> well, I, I just can't. Guy. Dude, why don't you just admit that that's kind of inconsistent on some level? I admit it. Okay, sure. But why, why don't you get Alex on and explain I would. I would love to get Alex Jones back on uh, the we show. We liked Alex. Let's, I really did. I didn't agree with him, but I liked him. We liked him. Uh, guys, but, man, you're just doing yourself a disservice. Not, Dude, not, we treated Alex great when he was did, on the fucking radio we, show. We got uncomfortable because he started falling apart uh, on the phone. And we, we questioned him, and he didn't really have answers I was for to, some important uh, questions. I was trying to pin him down on something, and I don't remember what it was. I know, dude. we got to find the audio. Months. And me and Jimmy looked at each other like, whoa. But we treated him very well. We didn't treat him like an asshole. We, you know, but again, we didn't agree with him, but we, we gave him a good interview, I think. Yeah, I thought so. We, he, he was very vague at, at, at times. You get into the details like, you want, like you're asking for. But, Look, dude, we'll he should be on. on that level. All right, Dave, thank you. We'll have him back on.
That'd be great. And All right. thank you, guys. All right, Dave. All right, and uh, Troy, th so you like the Jesse Ventura is what you're getting at. I mean, and the conspiracy you know, shot. Yeah. As far as the Area 51 goes, I mean, they showed all the pictures of the uh, the drawings of ideas that they've had for. Oh, that, that's stuff I've seen in books and popular science. And no, stuff I, I like that for, shit though. for over 30 years. I dig on that shit. Troy I, likes I like the dream. I, I like yeah. the idea. He's a dreamer. <laughs> and, as ridiculous as he it sounds, I like the idea the of them finding alien spacecrafts. As ridiculous as it is, finding alien spacecrafts. Taking them apart, well, and then our military engineer, as they were saying, yeah. yes, so yes, you know whether it's true or not, it's uh, it's I it's still think, a, a, I, I think it's um, some very creative scientists uh, being left to their own devices without being interfered with by um, uh, politicians, and they're in there uh, uh, doing what they do, which is being brilliant, making uh, amazing aircraft and weaponry, and being left the fuck alone. It's great. I love it. I love Area 51. Love it! <laughs> and back to Alex Jones real quick, if I can say something. Um, you know, he had this whole huge conspiracy on the, the oil spill in the Gulf. And it was supposedly all this stuff going on, and they had to use uh, a nuclear bomb to nuclear. carterize the whole. And then all of a sudden, nothing, everything was fine, and nobody called him out on this conspiracy. And that's sort of some of the things I have a problem with Alex Jones with. Is you know stuff like that will just slide under the radar and he'll just glaze over it. But Dude, he has five days a week of radio to fill or yeah. whatever his radio. He's a lot. There's a lot to like us. He's got to spew a lot of horseshit out to get sure. uh, to the end of his show. I don't know how many days he does, but yeah, it's exactly All right. It. And Patrice has been on his show a couple times well, I too. I believe you. so. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, I would love to hear Patrice we'll in with you guys and, and Alex. We'll I think that'd we'll be a good show. We'll get him back on. I mean, he was uh, definitely good radio. By the way, uh, you mentioned the oil spill. Where is it? BP had a hell of a quarter. Yes, they do. How do you have that billion dollar profit when you destroy the Gulf? Because they've made unbelievable billions of dollars. I don't know that what the number is, but BP is one of the most profitable companies on the planet. Even after destroying uh, the Gulf, they had to pay out billions uh, in cleanup and uh, reparations it, it, it or whatever the fuck they them. want to call it. And they actually have made a profit. That's how big they are. They're uh, giant. Unbelievable. They're giant. I don't have the number. I'm looking Please, for it. Please, I hope the stock goes up. I'm so happy. I what happened to Troy? Off. He left. He quit. He tapped out. He tapped out. I've know. had it. I'm leaving. I want to know if he bom uh, uh, banged Stevie's mom. He's moving. He's moving. It's all mind control. <laughs> what do you think about uh, Jesse the Body Ventura's show, A Conspiracy Theory? Have you caught this thing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's... Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty informative, but also entertaining for the general public. I'm actually a consultant on it, and I'm in the oh, next... Oh, you are. And I'm in the next four episodes uh, coming up. In fact, this this Friday, at 9 p.m. Central, uh, it's the Police State series. We actually have an article up on Infowars.com uh, dealing with this, and uh, it's bombshell FEMA camps confirmed. And we actually went out to some FEMA camps, uh, myself and the governor, and uh, got threatened with arrest and other things. So it's 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 it's. Hey Alex, he, he oh, Alex, hey, Alex yeah, are the FEMA it in right now? Yeah. Alex, are the FEMA camps like are they being loaded up now, or is or is this are they getting ready to get loaded up? Okay, let me be specific. Um, and it's free online on YouTube. It's Police State 4, The Rise of FEMA. I released it six months ago. Police State 4, The Rise of FEMA. It was good, too. I like that one. And, I like and it, it takes two hours to go over the whole history of it, to show the congressional hearings where they admit the FEMA camps, uh, to show the mainstream news articles, and to show people uh, facilities that are designated as, quote, emergency centers. Act. Mind control. Mind control. I was a former governor. A fighter. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. I'm a former <laughs> Navy SEAL, a governor, a fighter. <laughs> this guy just you know what? See, hold on, hold on. But Was that fucking like Alex out. with a sense of humor? God damn! Yeah. Alex has oh, a sense God of humor. bless him. <laughs> Alex, our problem with uh, the Jesse Ventura conspiracy show is he doesn't get into any real shit. Like, we want him to step over the line uh, during when the Area 51 when episode. When we return, Jesse Ventura goes head-to-head -head with Area 51 security. I'm standing here, but I'm turning around. I'm not going to be shot. <laughs> what happened, Jesse? <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, listen. listen no one's going to shoot listen, Jesse Ventura. <laughs> guys, guys, let me just say something about Ventura. He's been on your show quite a few times. I know you guys had that controversy with him, but I've known yeah. him. We want him back, by the I've way. I've known him. Tell listen, him I've back. known him really well. Yeah. I've known him really well for about five years. Spent a lot of time with him. He really is for real. It isn't a tough guy act. And, you know, uh, he's an older guy. 
uh, you know, he is uh, grumpy sometimes. I'm on my way to Plum Island. There's a dinghy following me. Yeah, but, Turn the, around. but the issue is, the issue is, he's he's real. He's a great guy. Uh, he's and 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 you know, uh, uh, he was just you know tired that morning. Whenever you guys basically had your attack schnauzer on him. And attacks uh, now. No, no, you got. Unfortunately, the video doesn't do it justice. Yeah, so, uh, it, it was about an hour of going back and forth. Jesse was being and, pretty uh, obnoxious and he to just Jimmy. Didn't, it, Wouldn't answer questions. Yeah, no, he, he was sitting there. He wasn't letting him finish. Oh my God, he certainly was. Hey, can you can you give me an idea of uh, who who may be going to a FEMA camp? Like, what do you have to be doing? Is it, oh, is it, please say is it, what is I want it, you to is say. Is it extreme? Please say Wait, what I want you to say. Let me tell you, Patrice. Is it, is, it, is it extreme or is Patrice, it... Patrice, the FEMA camps... The FEMA camps are real, oh. Patrice. No, no, I'm no. a governor, and they wouldn't let me into the camp. Yeah, they wouldn't <laughs> let me in. I, they won't let me into the reactor room at the nuclear reactor. What does that tell you? <laughs> uh, perhaps that there's radioactivity in there. And they don't need you going in there, Jesse. And the Plum Island one. Come on, there was no boats following them. There was a boat. Oh way yes, the, they were. There was a boat way in the distance, sir. You're not even. Oh, that's not true. Let me tell you. We was saw a, it. There was a, an aura, a little zodiac. Like they <laughs> no, had a, it was. They home, let me tell you what lens. happened with that. Let me tell you what happened with that. <laughs> yes, Alex. they couldn't get anybody Submarines. to even rent them a boat to, to go out yeah, there. Plum they, Island's no joke. Guy, but that's the guy's livelihood. All the people's livelihood. They're not going to risk uh, uh, getting uh, in trouble going to Plum Island because it is a facility. That now, you're Ventura, not on. Ventura. Listen, Ventura never asked them to even get near it. They just wanted to be able to basically go over into legal waters. You're supposed to stay a mile away. And, and let me tell you, Plum Island's no joke. Uh, they have 36, because I was a consultant on that show. I sent them the info. 36 level 4 bioweapons labs. Uh, let me just shift gears, because this is important. Uh huh. Previously, they would have these things in the middle of the desert or on islands. Uh, level 4 are things like smallpox, Ebola, mm. anthrax, and... But worse, that, that's only level three. When they weaponize them or yeah. soup them up, supercharge them, they're now level four. Now, uh, just 150 miles or so from where I sit in Galveston, Texas, hurricane ravaged, uh, very dangerous place to put one. They have put at the University of Texas at Galveston a level four bioweapons lab. Black now, Mesa? get this, get this, in that's level life. two containment. Level two is just when you're dealing with, with like the regular, you know, seasonal flu or something, uh -oh. or, or 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 a regular cold. Now, why would they do that? Well, let me break that down. All right. They have they've spent six billion dollars in the last nine years on what they call BioShield, and even uh, the Washington Post, uh, the Baltimore Sun have reported that these are. Factories making bioweapons and developing bioweapons, but it was sold Turd. to Congress. It was sold to Congress as defense, uh -huh. and now all over the country, San Antonio, Turd. Texas. I mean, the list goes on and on. They have level four. Listen, yeah. level four is supposed to be three rows of barbed wire, minefields, machine gun nests, Mine and be field. at least and be. At, I'm not joking. No. Totally contained with a self-destruct system uh, to burn it out and three stories underground. Now, they've got level 4 behind little glass windows on the coast of Texas. Now, Lyme's disease, it's been confirmed was leaked out of uh, uh, there at Plum Island. Um, uh, the West Nile, those are just level three type things. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, this is a hardcore issue, these bioweapons, when you understand but that why, the Rockefeller like, Foundation... I don't understand why they're doing this. Why would they do that then? Well, let me tell you. What's the plan? What's the end game? And, and, and if you guys want this stuff, because I didn't know you were bringing up bioweapons, uh, I can send it to you. It's up on InfoWars.com. Just mm -hmm. just type in, type in Rockefeller Foundation uh, developed vaccines to sterilize. And we've got all the government documents, UN, Club of Rome, Biological Diversity Assessment, where the globalists openly say, mm -hmm. well, you guys know about uh, you know Ian Fleming or whatever his name was that wrote the James Bond movies? Yeah. Uh, uh, he was a member of OSS and then MI6. Well, notice he wrote the book Moonraker. Now, 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 the movie Moonraker with Roger Morris, cheesy with Jaws and all the uh, rest of it. Of course. But you've got this elitist industrialist who's going to release a bioweapon to kill everybody on Earth, then they're going to come back to the planet and repopulate it with the super race. Now, 
All of that is based on real government plans, but they're not going off-world to do it. They've got giant underground bunkers that they've spent trillions of dollars on since the 1950s. Let me just throw one yeah, out. But, but you sir, heard sir wasn't, James, wasn't every James Bond a super criminal that was trying to do something to the world? <laughs> Like that's every no, I know. But what I'm saying is plot. that's true because the one before that, the spy who loved me, yeah, was trying to kill everybody so he can uh, populate the ocean. Goldfinger wanted to make all the gold radioactive so he'd have all the gold in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I'm telling you is a lot of these writers. He was a member of British intelligence. They 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 put scenarios that are being discussed or talked about into films. It's, I mean, it's kind of like The Wizard of Oz. I had a, yeah. a pretty big filmmaker on my show a year ago, and I told him, uh, you know The Wizard of Oz is about the gold standard and the silver standard. And he thought I was joking, went out and found out it's mainstream fact. Really? Uh, and, yeah, and he and, and he's now made a movie, The Secret of Oz, uh, about that that's airing all over you know, television worldwide. But the issue is, yes, a lot of things that you see in movies are basically – psychological imprints or images exactly. of what's really being developed. Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants is about the Fed. The Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Listen, Open and it. Anthony. It's mind control. <laughs> mind control. They're using harp. We love Jesse, by the way. We love him back on the show. I can't stop watching his show. Yeah. I just We just want him to get in a little trap. <laughs> when we return, hey, have Jesse you guys seen the parody? Hey, 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 listen, have you seen the battleship? Hey, have you seen the parody? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. It is with one the, of the funniest damn things. <laughs> hey, he's moving. I'm not taking a plane. I'm driving. It is so goddamn funny. It's that guy great. nailed him. It was really good. No, I can't. But it, but it, they really do over dramatize what Jesse's going to do, and then what really happens. Jesse Ventura faces a line of M16s as he tries to get into some of the most classified locations. Are they there? Yes, sir, Governor. All right, let's go home. <laughs> I was turning around so I could get more info. They want to shoot me. The show would be huge if he got arrested there, Alex. Tell yeah, him to get arrested. He's tell him to get cross the line. Well, I will time. tell you. I cross will tell you with another network. 51. Yeah, I will tell you with another network, and I can't talk about it till it comes out next year, oh. uh, early next year. But on another even bigger network. I was in. Well, I'm not going to get into it. I was there when people got arrested, and I escaped. I had to jump in a river. Uh, so <laughs> oh, so someone did that. Is that turd? Is that one hosted by? Um, who's that hosted by? Uh, Gold Dust. <laughs> 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 the ultimate warrior. The ultimate warrior. Warrior says the conspiracy happens. <laughs> I am the warrior. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Alex knows. Alex knows the whole deal. Warrior says. Uh, warrior know. says Infowars.com. <laughs> we, we just listen want to here. Get a <laughs> listen here, warrior. I'm a governor, and I like PrisonPlanet.com. Uh, Zach, um, Levi. Yeah. No way. The guy I, from Chuck. Yeah, Chuck. Chuck. Holy sh! Well, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not on ESPN, I, I don't know too. what it is. I said that. And it's, so and it's not a conspiracy that. theory. Yeah, yeah. yeah Let so me she, tell you. She, you wait all, a minute. She was exhibiting signs of mind control. <laughs> mind control. I think the harp unit oh, was dude. tuned into her. That made me laugh so hard just then that I got lightheaded. I almost passed out. It was such a shooting laugh that came out of my face. The as secret society of the publicists. <laughs> That's what it's all about. You know, it's, 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 it's something that, it's the Illuminati. You know what I like? I like when he goes to storm in somewhere and he acts like they don't know he's coming and you, they show him from behind, walk in. The and camera's be, there. I, they're already in the office. Yeah, yeah. When he walked in. What, what, are, you, what are you doing here? Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, well, dude. Well, yeah, but you know what's worse? Wall those Street are the only Boys guys. Club. Those are the only conspiracy theorists that they put on TV. It's just like Jerry Springer. It's the worst of the worst. The worst they get on that. I see things. Yeah, it's that yeah. approach. <laughs> it's the storm in and pretend like you're just storming in thing. Yeah. Or it's the Michael Moore thing when you walk into the Kmart corporate office and they go, "Yeah, you can't come upstairs with your fucking cameras. Yeah, yeah. Just showing up." And he goes, "Well, obviously they're hiding they're something. They're hiding something. No, dickhead. You can't roll up with a fucking camera <laughs> crew." I like the uh, the Jesse Ventura approach is the Ralph Cramden approach when he walks in. Aha! <laughs> oh, cocktail!
cocktail time. Come on out, Hob. Come on out, Hob. I know you're up to something. Yeah. And you know that I know. You know that I know. <laughs> That the harp unit's doing mind control. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Area 51, I'm not, I'm not. They got guns. Let's run, not. Uh, Wouldn't it be great at the end of every episode when Ventura's stupid theories are proved wrong? Yeah. If he had to act like Cramden when he, yeah, when yeah. he realizes he's wrong, just. And make that face and kind of <laughs> wave his arms around and then just go to the black girl at the table. Baby, you're, you're the, the greatest. greatest. <laughs> you're the greatest. Sad thing, the sad thing is he isn't 100% oh, wrong. Jesus he's Christ. just, the, he's not the guy. He's so not the guy. He's not the guy. He if, if, you, if you just sat there and just talked about the Federal Reserve in a calm manner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, if, first of all, they couldn't have it. If they figured out everything was built on I'm sand. I'm going in. Here's the secret building where all the conspiracy is. It, why don't you just fucking ask somebody? Walk in. <laughs> we spoke with a man in a van in the middle of the desert. <laughs> You know, that was you know the, the most ridiculous thing I ever saw. No, the, the worst one. The worst one is that ghost hunters. Ah, oh. like I love how you're gonna watch the episode. Like, the promo. Th like this is the episode they're gonna prove that ghosts exist. Yes. But for some reason, this isn't international news at this point. Like you're no. gonna walk into the office the next day. Hey, did you see? They they proved it. The trailer is always some kind of thing where it's like, did you hear that? Dude, I don't know what that was. Something went ah, and then. Ghost hunters. And then it's always grainy footage. It's, the best part is when yeah. they sit there and they get mad at the ghost and they set up all this stuff and they, the ghost always has a name. They're like, Mary Ellen, you have 17 minutes to show yourself. I love. Or else what? I love that. Or else what? I've been here a while. 17 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I could do that on my head. I love that fucking reality show, like Tease. I used to do a bit about that, how like they'll be like, coming up next on Bakers or whatever. And I'll be like, yeah. it's two guys in the kitchen, like, I'm going to fucking rape you. You. And you're like, holy shit! I got. I'm like, I got it. If they this raped is... each other, it would have been in the paper six <laughs> yeah, fucking months ago. <laughs> like they raped each other on this show. It's We're... the most dramatic moments. That's another one. That, that, like uh, uh, any kind of paranormal activity or something, they always have that night vision. It's grainy. You see the people's eyes are all open wide, and 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 you can see their retinas. What was that? And it's like and what was that downstairs? And then they run downstairs. It's I like why don't, you have, why don't you have a camera in every room? Shaky it's... camera, and then you hear, oh, oh yeah. my god. Tune in for the next, and then you tune in, and nothing ever happened. Yeah, the oh my god was like, we're on a film. Oh my god, someone should have gotten the film. That's Dude, fucking. I, I can a literally great go point. on the internet and look at my apartment from outer space, see a <laughs> yes. picture of it, and they can't find a ghost in an eight-room colonial. No. <laughs> They can't, get, they can't get footage of it. That's a, oh, we just missed it. That's a great uh, point about not having a camera. And every, they're, they literally react like a dad that just had a kid for the first time. Yeah, right, yeah. Honey, we're going to tape everything. <laughs> quick, quick, get over here. He's walking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a uh, conspiracy theory, right? Oh, oh Jesse, oh, Jesse, 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 Jesse. Yeah. He was uh, doing the uh, JFK uh, assassination. Finally, finally, yeah. someone was going to look into this. Sure. Because, oh, no, people uh, have looked into it before. Uh, really? Yeah. Wow, because according to uh, Jesse, boy, you just, uh, it had to come down to him. Yeah, good, good, good. It was, they were over-dramatizing how this guy uh, was getting in and going to get all the info. And he's talking to um, uh, Howard Hunt's son, uh, because Howard Hunt was supposedly one of the hobos that were walking behind the fence. And the, it was every bit of drivel that you've ever heard come out of conspiracy theorists mouth about the assassination um and, and then he talks to uh what's his name bugliosi uh Bugli bugliosi Bul oh, did, bugliosi I'll, I'll, I'll credit jesse for that though because bugliosi wrote what i think is the greatest book ever written on the jfk conspiracy yeah. and yeah, he knows well, everything about it well jesse just wouldn't let him talk kept chiming in and and saying like, well, why don't why didn't uh, this person uh, talk to him? And and Bugliosi's just just schooling Jesse. Of course he is. And uh, finally, uh, Bugliosi was just like, shut the camera off, because it was getting ridiculous. It was getting ridiculous. Jesse wasn't letting him talk or anything. And Jesse, of course, takes it as ah, he shut the camera off. 
It's so, like but, a big deal. But it wasn't, but Bugliosi was not nervous about Jesse's points. No, Jesse's, but you had an answer for every one of them. It was logical. Everything made sense. Everything Jesse had. Jesse had these secretive people that, that you know, they open cracks in hotel room doors. Who's, who's there? Who's there? It's me, the governor. And it's just, it, nothing new. And he made it sound like everything he was saying was, well, I guess that proves it. No, it didn't. But you see, that's the way he debates. And, and a guy like Bugliosi, yes. Bugliosi has, has shit more information about the JFK assassination <laughs> than any of us will ever read. I'm, he has read, ev I'm not saying he has not made any errors. He's he wrote like an 1100 or 1200 page small yeah, yeah. font book. Oh it's a, and there's a follow-up CD with more information. He has written and read, he's read every fucking ounce every of conspiracy. bit of documentation. He knows everything about it. I mean, he, he investigated the book for 20 years. And then he was talking to another guy who was, of course, there with his wife and kid, and it's like, you were, uh, like, 11 feet from the president when he was shot, and they didn't even talk to you for more than a few minutes? It's like, there were thousands of people there. Uh, what are they going to do? Interrogate someone before they really know what's going on? It's All that shit is just... I, I, I'll give shoddy police work, things like that. Well, there are so, and even that, there are so many things that they quote the, uh, so many times they'll quote things that this one said or that one said that seem ominous. And in Bugliosi's book, it's called Reclaiming History. Yeah. He gives the entire quotes. He goes, you see how they take this piece out of context here? Uh -huh. Here's what the police chief actually said. And it gives you the entire. And it puts it in perspective and you realize it wasn't what he was trying to put across on this dumb dumb edge show no they make it look like like this was the war like they say it was terrible uh the, the warren commission was terrible a nine month it's one of the longest investigations in history <laughs> yeah it's one of the most in-depth investigations about anything that's ever happened and gerald ford was part of it and he became president of the united states uh, a return favor oh like really? everything was and then nixon was involved yeah, and, really? and so was Earl Warren, the Chief Justice of the Supreme. Like, who among these guys, <laughs> when you have all of these people that have legacies and full lives, who among them says, all right, guys, we got to cover this up? And the rest of the room goes, okay. All right. <laughs> who talks to 40 people about covering it up? Oh, these conspiracy theorists are such fucking assholes. And, and then they, he had to jump into the JFK movie shit. Uh, without even mentioning it, but he, he was saying things like, It was a coup d'etat! And I, look back and to the left! I despise when people quote things, they say, Stand down! Oh. We know that's JFK, which yeah, is a great yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pesci's best wig. <laughs> <laughs> but when you look, by the way, Bugliosi puts in his book a photo, uh, it's, a, it's a photo negative, of uh, Kennedy being hit with the final shot when he's leaning forward. And yeah. you can see blood coming out forward. It's not coming out. Right. It's a, it's, it's a momentary uh, a s screenshot, but it's, it's like uh, when you look at JFK, his head is leaned forward and blood is coming out and going forward. Yeah. So it's like, I guarantee you, Jesse did not show that fucking photo. Of course he did. So you think it's uh, Oswald at this I point? do think it was Oswald, and I was a conspiracy guy for a long time. I believed, I, I read a lot of the conspiracy stuff, I believed in it, but then little things happen that debunk it, like the House Select Commission on Assassinations in 78, they said that by definition a conspiracy must have occurred, and Jesse's all over that, oh, see, they said! Yeah. But it's like, medical evidence didn't say that. The only thing that said that was an acoustic opinion, because they did acoustic tests, they thought they heard a fourth shot over a policeman's radio, but then they did another test with uh, uh, different acoustics experts, and they said, no, that sound actually came a minute after the assassination. And echoes off of fences, and you know, there's buildings around it. It could sound like it's coming from another direction. But that's what it was. Though. So, uh... So the the, 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 the uh, House Select Committee, they redid it, and Michael Bodden mm -hmm. was in charge. So all well, of a sudden, cool. Michael Bodden, 15 years after the assassination, the, the uh, what was it, the chief medical examiner from New York, is just going to lie? Yes. In front of Congress? Like, what are you, assholes? I forgot. Did we talk to that ghoul about the he assassination? He was great. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah, fucking yeah. phenomenal. Now, but, yeah. Genius. Oh. Well, more importantly, more Jesse Van Tor's show is just terrific to oh, watch. Oh, it's fantastic. Do you watch it and, and think to yourself, how did this guy become governor? 
Yeah, yeah, I actually do. It's like, what? Like, how did he become governor? He he kind of had some uh, legitimacy back then when he ran for governor. It was he wasn't as wacky. Now he's just, but he's always shaking. Yeah, he's but just, I think he, I'm driving. No, but I think he was always wacky. Yeah. Yes. He because he, he had the whole shaved but look and the little mustache. But thing. now he can't cover up his wackiness now anymore. Now he can't. Oh, that's look at all the shit coming out of the front of his head. Miss it. The front of his head explodes. Yeah, but that's, there's also, but there that's is, obviously a shot from uh, the front. It, it does. It actually does look like a shot from the front. Honestly, it no, really that does. looks like a shot from the back. And, and we know a little bit. That about looks that, like right? that looks like a, an entry wound from the back, and his whole face is coming apart. Right. The top of his head's coming off. Ugh, Jesus. Uh, there's a, there's actually a still photo. Look for still photos, Danny. Of uh, it's my Christmas card. <laughs> he got such a fucking oh when when they, when, when they go through the entire thing of them going to the hospital and pulling up at a Parkland Memorial and how Jackie's just cradling his head and she won't let people... He really, Bugliosi humanizes the assassination because we just look at it like President Kennedy was killed. But he really shows you this husband and wife dynamic but because it was her yeah, husband yeah, yeah. And, and and while the whole ride to the assassination she's like oh my god they've killed my husband what have they done she's just talking to him Ugh. and uh she wouldn't get out of the car because she, she wanted people to be away so they wouldn't see his head blown apart and then i think she opened her hand and there was a piece of his brain oh. in, or a piece of his head in her hand and she gave it to the secret service like it was just really really also did an amazing job oh my god. yeah it's really just depressing this witcher yeah. All right. I want to talk about the uh, the okay. WikiLeaks guy for a second. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love him. Oh, uh, but now now he comes out with all these uh, secret uh, yes. memos and documents about uh, what, what what did he, what, world what, leaders? It was world leaders and, uh, and stuff and the situations. diplomats are, are doing around the uh, around the world. Yeah. And now he's being brought up on rape charges. <laughs> You know what? Though? Out of nowhere? No, but he's no. There, there was allegations for a couple of years that he Were had. Were there? The, yeah, yeah. Larry, what a his, convenient time to <laughs> actually put him on the uh, Interpol. Uh, yeah. I don't want to sound like I know. I know this is <laughs> what they're doing. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> the government is involved. <laughs> if you can't trust the government, I'm a Navy SEAL. <laughs> Are you? Oh, what, shit. Do you know? Do you know what happened? But this sounds like one of those conspiracies. Sure does. He's up on rape charges. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's a brilliant. <laughs> you hate that impression. guy though when oh. he's doing those those shows. I expose the Kennedy assassination. I just this many that years later. Yeah, did you see? He did, went to uh, uh, Area Fifty One. Yeah, because Area if I 51. step over that line, they can shoot me. Will they really shoot? Will they a shoot a governor? Yeah. <laughs> what? You're not a governor anymore. And no, and they wouldn't. They wouldn't shoot you. And 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 then they kept teasing it. When we come back, the governor confronts gunmen at uh, Area 51. They have Did binoculars. He? And then he goes, they'd shoot me? Uh, yeah, yeah, they'd shoot you. All right, let's turn around. It's not worth it. <laughs> and that was the whole show. See, so they go, the, the guy just jerked us off the whole, the whole goddamn show. And then the other one, Plum Island, was one of my favorites. Because he's like, we're being tailed by the Coast Guard. <laughs> and it's a dinghy that he needs a fucking lens three feet long to even see. A little Zodiac boat. They're, they're tailing me. I think we better turn around. <laughs> he never does what he wants to do. The governor confronts a line of machine guns. No, I don't. I'm going home. All right, governor, as he shakes. <laughs> I love the shake. One of my favorite shows now to watch. Conspiracy Theory is great. I watched the one on... Uh, just last night, I watched the one on um, the Pentagon. Ooh, what's going it on? It was a missile. What? I spoke with an expert. And it's just some guy. It's his experts are people I've never heard of. They're old wrestlers. One guy. That didn't make <laughs> Let me tell you something, Governor. The, uh, the government knew about this. You're saying the government knew? And, of, and he's just some guy. One of his experts is just incredible. Just <laughs> incredible. <laughs> And then now they've added in... Where did the missile come from? Troy might know. An I don't know. airplane. Oh, Troy. No, I don't want to... <laughs> you know what happened? A couple days before Christmas. I don't want to deal with heavy shit. That American <laughs> Airlines flight right. flew <laughs> just over the Pentagon, by the way. The missile hit and blew up and blocked the view of the American Airlines plane flying past and over the Pentagon. No one saw it because the big fireball. Then where the fuck is the plane? What? Where's the plane? Who? <laughs> Jesse didn't explain that. And then it's like, and no one was able to find one piece of airplane debris. 
And then I, I, I was like, all right, go on Google. Now Google Pentagon 9-11 aircraft debris. And there is debris everywhere, everywhere with right? American Airlines markings on it. And it's not like one piece here. It's scattered everywhere. There's landing gear. There's fucking engine turbine parts. There's fucking everything. And the plane not hitting 90 degree on a 90 degree angle to the wall didn't make a shape of an airplane like it did at the Trade Center. It hit at a very sharp angle to the wall, so you can't say, well, where's where's the outline of an airplane, much like Wiley e. Coyote? Yeah, thank you. I was going to say, like a cartoon. Yeah. He's looking for a cartoon uh, situation. It wasn't a missile. It's a fucking plane full of people <laughs> that died. Troy. So why won't they release the video? <laughs> because you know what? They released one video that shows a plume of smoke coming out of an engine and a tail behind a piece of uh, uh, blocking. And the rest of the video, how about this? I'll give you one thing that might be might be a credible answer. Do you think perhaps the Pentagon doesn't want everyone knowing where their every surveillance camera is? Hmm? Possibly, but I don't understand why you would <laughs> well, I'm just like, saying I'm why not, I, I own my house. I have surveillance cameras. I don't even go on and tell people where my cameras are. But why wouldn't you just oh. shut everybody up by showing a f one frame they of the did. plane? Okay, they showed that yeah. angle, so they exposed where that security camera is. So just yeah. show the plane going in. They did to me. I saw it. Where? Do you think any other camera might not? Uh, it's maybe, missing a bunch of frames. Do you think it might not? When a plane's doing, you know, uh, in excess of 500 uh, miles an hour, I think the 30 frames per second of video really doesn't capture it coming into frame and then hitting the building. So if that the, uh, seems to be the problem. I just it's uh, less than a fucking millisecond. Well, where's the plane then, Troy? Where's the? I mean, look. Where's, so, where's the plane? Why wouldn't they? Where's the plane? What? Where's the plane? They hit the building? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, I don't know. No, where's the plane that left? That left the fucking... I, I don't know. I can't answer that. I have no plane. idea, but was I'm just a, saying... Was if, that a fake plane? If fake flight? If there, there we go. Just tell me where so. the plane is. If where there are, are people that were in the plane? Yeah, where are the people that were in the plane? I don't know. They're all still not talking. But I just talking. don't know why... The there's... island from Lost. Ah, Oceanic 815. Maybe it was yeah. a fake plane that took off. You know, if, there's this, fake plane. if there's this many questions, why wouldn't you just answer? There's not this many questions. Well, if somebody's questioning, look... I don't believe a plane hit this building. A plane hit the Pentagon. So why wouldn't they just show the frame of the plane going into the building and go, there you go, well, shut the fuck up. there's a nice Photoshop <laughs> for everybody. He that's said that? What, no, that's what we'd get. Oh, okay. They could show video of the plane flying right in the Pentagon, and you'd get, ah, oh, that seems to be a uh -oh. little Photoshop. D-Boy. I'm making a very... One of my experts, D-Boy, is here. <laughs> making a rare appearance on the show. And later in the program, the governor storms the Pentagon. They said that. They said that. And by storming, they show him getting a security pass, clipping it on his pocket, <laughs> and walking through with pixelated head man. I'm walking with pixelated head guy. How did this happen? Was it a tragic experiment from Area 51? <laughs> <laughs> Let me go to Mike at DC. Mikey, who was Mike. who was at the Pentagon the Pentagon that day, Troy. Go ahead, Mike. Uh oh. Hey Troy, you're a fucking retard. Yeah. Uh -huh. why, why? Because uh -huh. I question. Because I have questions. That's why I'm a fucking retard. Well, well that's what happens I don't, when you question I don't believe, the government. I don't believe everything that is told to me. Going, this is the truth. You have to believe this. That's why I'm a fucking retard. He's not going to be spoon fed. Mikey, what no, do you got on this? They told you problem. you couldn't breathe water either. Now go in and give it a try. <laughs> Mikey, go ahead. What What do you got? There were so many witnesses that saw the plane that no, none of these conspiracy theorists ever listened to. I was working less than a quarter of a mile away on top of a building when the plane hit. I almost got hit by the plane. So you mean the missile? So you, do you want to take this guy's word for it, Troy? I don't, I don't know who this and, jerk and off why, is. And, and why isn't there witnesses that said I mean, that, just that a call, missile hit the Pentagon? Where are those there, guys? There were people that said, I didn't see a plane go in there. But did they say I saw a missile? <laughs> yeah, because they didn't see anything. I didn't see a One plane. One woman said, she, she, last night I was watching the show, and she says, I didn't see a plane. Um, <laughs> what I heard sounded more like a bomb. She's inside the fucking building, first of all. Right. So you're saying you didn't see a plane, and it sounded like a bomb. She's in the building. <laughs> she couldn't see it. It hit and exploded. Like okay, fine. To me, that's like fine. a bomb. So just just show one fucking frame of the airplane going into the building. Just to that's shut no everybody reason, the fuck up. No reason to. Why Why placate dummy motherfuckers? Like why Troy? should the Pentagon and the military say, all right, let me put this out. 
just to prove it to these idiots that won't believe shit anyway. I don't know. I, I like I said to you before. I have a hard time. Ten trusting years later, here's here's what Jesse would say, and. <laughs> Ten years later, they release a clip of the plane going in. Well, that's enough time to doctor up something. That's what they say now. Why release it? Just to make people more fucked up. I got a uh, theory as far as the video footage goes. Uh -huh. D-Boy's got it. It's a, it's a camera that's shooting all day long. You're not going to shoot 30 frames per second. Right, You're going to shoot like... It's just like when you see like somebody robbing a bank. Oh, that's true. It's, it's them going 30. like this. And then this. It's and, never you know, 30 frames. It's never 30 right, frames per right. second. So something traveling that fast, it's obvious the camera's going to miss it if it's not shooting at 30 frames now, per second. If you look, so at, look that, at that, yeah, it's, you see see that now to the right, that little um, square post there in front. Right behind that, you see the tail of a plane sticking up. It's that pointy thing. And the plume of smoke is where the engine was already damaged from hitting light poles. So you see a plume of smoke. And the tail of the jet, it's behind that square post to the right. Do you see it? Yeah, I see what that is. I mean, I can't make that out as a plane it's very, part. It's very hard to make out as a plane. But it's the fucking plane. Okay. Well, it ain't that's, a missile. And that's fine. And you're allowed to believe what you think you see there. <laughs> and by the way, a cruise missile or a missile would not skate on the ground like that. The only thing that could do that is, by the way, and they were saying the pilot, much to win experienced. It's an inexperience that almost had him crash into the ground well in front of the Pentagon. Okay. He got so fucking lucky hitting that thing. A missile would have come in. Why wouldn't a missile come in high and hit the top of the fucking thing? Why skate the ground, hit light poles, you, a you, generator? You can control missiles to do whatever you want. Not nope. like that, my friend. Yes, you can. You can have nope. them go like that. No. no. Maybe in Missile cartoons shit. You can, you can yeah. launch them from the middle of the ocean to go hit thousands and thousands of miles away to your, your exact destination. Missiles cannot fly. A cruise missile can fly. Other missiles are uh, gravity-based missiles that use uh, fins to steer on their way down. They're not powered. They're not powered. Cruise missiles are powered. That's not a cruise missile. And even a powered cruise missile is, is in an exoset going fucking two feet off an ocean and hitting light poles. Okay. It might damage the missile. But let me you ask know, you. You know what did it? Wings. Large wings. The same dimension of a 757 hit macho, light poles. Macho man Randy Savage thinks it was a missile. Ah, oh yeah! <laughs> but I, I, I just, agree <laughs> with you, Governor. <laughs> I don't understand why I'm an asshole for questioning what has been given to me as the truth. You're questioning shit that is so logical and so spelt out. So, I, so, that you so, look silly. It's like questioning the fact that we are on the 36th floor. Would you question that? Every no, day you come in and press the elevator button. Just because the elevator you're says. You're not counting. You, have you ever counted every floor? Have you gone outside and tried to find your window and no. gone, that's 37? You're trusting that the elevator every day is letting you off on that floor. All I'm saying, man, is is if you are trusting everything that is being tell, told to you as the truth. I don't, but I trust That's, that's this. some scary shit, dude. But I trust that's like, this. That's like some getting the fucking cattle car shit. But you know what I mean? No, like, no, there's enough facts to back this up. Okay, no one's, so no there's... one's telling me that a, a plane hit this with absolutely no proof. I'm being told a plane hit the Pentagon with irrefutable proof. Okay, so there you don't want, so your argument is you, you don't, people don't want to know or the government doesn't want you to know where the security cameras are in the Pentagon. Okay, now how many security cameras are around in the other buildings? So why can't they show the airplane coming and go, there's Maybe the fucking airplane. Maybe they didn't get it. You don't, are you kidding me? Who I don't You're going to tell me that they didn't confiscate every single security well, tape from every... Did. Okay, so why yeah. can't they just go from that building that's not the Pentagon? Could be a reason. I don't know. But let me tell you another thing. A lot of crimes are prosecuted and... Um, they rarely have video of the person killing somebody or robbing a house. They take what's called evidence, and they weigh it, and then they come to a conclusion with nary a piece of video. Uh, it's very rare, as a matter of fact, that video is showing a crime being committed, yet people are convicted all the time based on evidence. There is enough evidence at that scene of that crime to tell me that an airplane Hit that fucking building. Yeah, well, I guess. How I guess, do you explain American I, Airlines body parts, um, from fuselage parts, uh, a, a, a turbine engine, 
um, a landing gear wheel, which is exactly matched up to a 757. All debris spread out over a very large portion of, of this uh, crash site. How do you explain that? Okay. I, you know, I'm just saying, if but, there's see, a question of the plane... Do goes, more yeah. research! Well, first of all, first of all I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't done the research of exactly what was found at the debris site. Well, how about you just Google, uh, Google this. Pentagon... All right, Google Pentagon 911 no, 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 no. aircraft is... debris. No, let's see. I no, will no, see no. it. On your right. own time. No, no. On your own time. On your own time. After, hold on, hold on. After, after the holidays, debris. you come back with some research. Troy. Okay. And uh, you will you... be uh, converted uh, through evidence. You, th there isn't a what they call magic bullet videotape of this. It's not necessary. Right. It really isn't. And but, I think it only gets people more excited about, oh, look at this new cover-up. It's fucking, you know, I, I see uh, uh, what they could do in uh, movies these days. It's amazing what they could do with well, CGI. So you, th you think that everything that is told to us is the truth? No, I never said right. that. I mean, but, you, you, but I, I believe this is. Hold, hold on, hold on. We got yeah. eyewitnesses. We got a. Uh, I got a whole phone bank of eyewitnesses. eyewitnesses. Megan, I'm going to DC to find <laughs> this person. Megan, go ahead. Are you sure you want to talk? First you might be murdered. <laughs> <laughs> what, Megan? Half of DC saw that plane fly over. My brother was sitting did. in front of the White House and saw the plane. And the day after I rode my bike up there, you couldn't drive your car, but you could ride a bike or walk really close. And I took tons of pictures of yeah. plane parts sticking out of the building. So sure you did. Pictures. Good luck sleeping. Get a gun. They're going <laughs> to come for you. This chick is obviously a government plant. Just like they're coming for me for exposure. Troy, comment. Another eyewitness. Another eyewitness. Oh, well, all the people That's there. The somebody, somebody had to have shoot, shot video of the plane going in. How there has this? to be video somewhere. How about, how about this, my friend? Troy, my friend. Listen. There wasn't a lot of video There's cameras around. There's two. 2001. 2001 is a lot there, different and, than and, today. And New York City, New York City, there are exactly two videos of the first plane hitting the Trade Center. Only two. And not security Do you know how many fucking, and they weren't security cameras. Do you know how many fucking cameras are around in New York City? Only two. One was a video crew that just happened to hear this fucking screaming plane. And the other one was uh, recently some guy in in uh, uh, Jersey, I think. Right, it was Jersey. Had a video on way in the background. You see something happen to the Trade Center. So really, you're only getting one clear shot of a plane hitting that building. If a second plane didn't hit, and that was all they had, or or they didn't have that one video, there would absolutely be people saying that it was a missile that hit the Trade Center too. Right. Because there's no uh, uh, evidence. Um, but, you know, we saw one one video of the first plane hitting. Well, does uh, Trump believe that two planes hit the World Trade Center? Yeah, we oh, yeah think about absolutely. That. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so then why would a missile hit the Pentagon on the same day? I, you look, I, I, all I know uh -huh. is... You believe in the Loch Ness Monster. Oh, okay. hey, hey, now that I do. I've seen them. <laughs> I, I don't think he's big. Uh, he believes in the he's Tasmanian devil. He's a big devil. one. I don't know I what's wrong with him at WrestleMania back in '82. <laughs> I just don't know what's wrong with with asking questions. That's all. You got the answers, and then you keep asking. Okay, well, yeah, well, that's me, is that, that, so that's my answer right there. Two there it is. Two is four. Okay. Don't keep questioning. Well, two all, and two. all I'm saying, man, is Could if you, if you start no, believing, four. if you Could start believing five. everything you are told. I don't. What you're you're told on that TV? We don't. Well, I'm just saying, and, and you're not you're, you're, and you're, you're not questioning. No, no, you're just taking one much different than hang on, hang on one second. Hang on you're making me think. I'm making. Hang on one second. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the same thing. Why don't you believe anything anyone tells you? I don't. But I question. I, I ask questions, and there's nothing wrong with asking I do questions. Too, and I've, I've researched. And, and, and there's answers. nothing wrong with going. You know what? You're a fucking idiot because you don't believe that. It's like, well, I, sorry, it doesn't look like there's a plane fly in there to me. That's what was released. They released one video. There was a bazillion cameras that shot that. Why is that the only one that they released? What is wrong aside, with asking that? I, I, there's nothing wrong, but aside from all the other mountains of evidence that prove it's a plane, you're just taking that one thing, the video, or lack thereof, and basing your entire doubt and questioning on that instead of doing the research to see that it was indeed a fucking plane and then just going, oh, well, I could throw out the video aspect of it and look at all the other evidence and realize it was a plane. But instead, you're throwing out all the evidence and just considering the one piece of video. But there's just, it's just, it's odd. That's all I'm saying. It's odd that they release one video and you don't I'll see you, the plane. I'll going. give you that it's odd. Okay. I'll give you that. Okay. Yeah, but it does not, like I said, like it I said. does not make it 
not a plane. And when Pete, like I said, when people stop asking questions, look, now he's he's got his confident pose. <laughs> well, I'm just saying because you gave him a little. You gave him a little. Question authority. No, 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 Question authority. <laughs> Troy's Matt. a bigfoot hunter. No, whatever. No, look, all I'm, sa- <laughs> no. all I'm saying, and then, and then I've this is over. I've seen him. I've seen him. He's moving. <laughs> All I'm saying is, when people stop Are asking questions... you ready for questions, Santa Claus? Do you got your cookies yeah. made? <laughs> That's where some serious yeah. shit's going to fucking Claus is happen. When people Santa stop Claus. asking questions, you won't believe what you don't know. <laughs> Say what's All up right. to the tooth fairy. Ah. Ah. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I went to one of my experts, Troy Kwan. <laughs> you could be on that show, Troy. You could. Yeah, you Just know. open a door mysteriously. Hello, Governor. Get in the dark. I don't want people to see me. They, he doesn't want it. He's scared. Are you frightened that they might be hunting you? In all uh, in all fairness, there's people that have questions too, Troy. They're on the lines. Of course, there are. It's uh, you know, you're always going to get people that won't believe it based on one or two items. Whereas there's a lot of evidence that prove it's uh, it was what it was. But but a lot of these conspiracy people, they never consider it. They don't listen to it. Or they just blow it up. You go, what about the American Airlines fuselage parts that are being seen being picked up by many people? And they'll be like, uh, you know what? The <laughs> videotape wasn't. And it's like, wait, wait, I just asked you something. Well, the government doesn't have a squeaky clean image of, of telling us the truth all the time. So there's oh, nothing wrong with, with uh, going, oh, well, you lied about all this shit. Why wouldn't you lie about this? Oh, you're telling the truth about this. So I'd so rather we have believe, to believe that uh, Muslim fucking extremists. Um, caught us with our pants down and uh, killed a lot of people that day. Okay. Then think that our government fucked us on this one. Uh, especially considering that, wow, the, the, the whole conspiracy is still going on. The Muslims are still Rolling. fucking uh, the, the bad guy. You know, No, they are the bad Rolling guy. Roll what's in. Uh, Your mic's on. Roll in, sir. Call for you. It's Santa Claus. Merry Christmas, Roy! There's a call for you, Santa Claus! Oh, shit. The Roland shakes his ass and leaves. He knows how to hit and run. Roland knows how to hit and run. He's the king of hit and run. All right. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, no. That one was bad. I will give you this. I do respect your um, inquisitiveness of this whole thing, but I think you should look a little further into the other evidence and uh, then ma- make a decision, not just based on okay. the video. You come release. back with some actual yeah. evidence right. after yeah. the break. But, but you understand, though, when you when you start believing no. everything you're told, we didn't that, that's, some, right. that's some serious problem. That's like that's getting the fucking but cattle not, car with the rest of the sheep. You don't listen right. to the show. We but, don't believe in everything that is told But I'm not saying us. just because I believe this means I believe everything. I've Correct never right. said that. Okay. And, okay. I, and I'm not saying just because you don't believe this means you don't believe everything either. Right. It, it's a, a you take it by a case by case basis and you weigh the evidence, you do your research, and then you make a decision. And that's everything in life. Right. That's not just this or, right. or anything. So, um, uh, get the fuck. Merry out Christmas, here. gentlemen. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Troy. Have you been a good boy? Ho ho ho! <laughs> I'm just mad at Troy because he has so much fucking hair. <laughs> There goes Troy to the, the X Files uh, music. That should be his uh, music oh, for now. That is now Troy's music. Yes. He it, wants to believe. He's got posters up in his room. Why definitely. Is it, no, he definitely thinks there's aliens yeah, in Roswell. Yeah, of why, course. Why is he walking around bragging about having so much fucking hair? I don't think he said anything <laughs> about him. It's, it's just how he presents it's a visual it. Visual braggart. It's just how he presents it. Yeah, you the... couldn't fit another strand of hair no. in his fucking head. No. And then he then he fucking gels it with 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 fucking to come. Look, it suits him. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he actually uses jism though. I think he uses jism. <laughs> oh, he's nodding his head. Yes, he does. Okay. Oh, he, he does. Okay. Yeah. 